Hello and welcome once again to Dash 28 Live for match five of our marathon coverage of Cult Arms uh, round four this weekend. Uh, today we're going to be bringing you a match between Mark Cunningham and uh, Devlin Smith. They will be playing uh, Push as everyone else has this round for round four of the Call to Arms Universal Battle Kings of War Tournament. Uh, joining me today for commentary is Michael Piercy, Ashley Moat, and Adam Ballard. And uh, without further ado, let's just run straight on into talking about the list that they are going to be playing. Uh, let's switch over to Devlin's list. Okay. Uh, Devlin, walk us through what you take, please. Okie dokie. So um, at the top, I've got your standard human chaff. I got four units of whatever their unit strength three for 100 points. So they're there to just kind of die in droves, which will happen in. Uh, tenfold this game. Uh, rolling down, I've got two sets of knights. One of the vanilla knights with the upgraded banner of the green lady. So they have Pathfinder and then the Order of Redemption right below them for the super knights with uh, Jesse's J-boots for running over fences. Um, for a little bit of surge threat, I've got a horde of water elementals and a horde of uh, earth elementals. Um, Continuing on, Two Beasts of Nature. Um, the theme is not to have much shooting at all in this list, so they've both got the attacks and the wings upgrade, but they're just there to try to hit things and not die terribly. Um, below that is one of the better pieces of chaff in the game. That's not my entire army. The two Pegasi for flying around and being annoying and hitting war machines occasionally when I see them. Um, the Exemplar Redeemer is next, and he's what I call the uh, Dwarf Killer because he literally just runs around and punches golems in the throat. And then to round it all out, I've got some more inspiring sources with two identical druids with uh, Bane Chant Surge, and they come with the heal. So right, it's great. it's got some speed, it's got some unit strength, it dies a lot. So that's my <laughs> list. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, now let's go over to Mark's. Hello there. Uh, I've got the nine regiments of slave warriors which go boom so it's a list which goes boom uh and then the mop-up crowd is the black soul three hordes of them uh two which are defense five uh one with burr strength to bring it crushing um and one with hammer of measured force because it's a pseudo crushing uh and the one which is defense four is blessing three rocket rocket launchers uh, which probably won't survive long here, but um, if they do manage to hit, they might blow something up. Um, Overmaster, which grants Strider to every infantry at nine inches because he's got the Sacred Horn. Uh, and the Overmaster naked, uh, the winged Overmaster. Just to annoy. Right. Fantastic. All right, this is going to be interesting. So uh, now I'm going to bring up the UB room that you guys are going to be playing in, and we can talk through your deployments. Okay, so uh, you guys have used one of the Epic Dwarf maps, it looks like? Yep, uh, Epic Dwarf 1. Okay, and uh, what have you guys chosen for the terrain heights? Uh, high oh. three hills, flat uh, or zero for the swamp and lake. Uh, building and forest are height nine. Okay, cool. Um, so, and uh, Devlin is deployed on the top, and Mark is deployed across the bottom. So, Devlin, could you walk us through your deployment starting over on the left? Sure. Um, essentially, I kind of thought that Mark was going to take the bottom right, and he did because that was where it was wide open. And I knew that trying to fight his army head on is not going to work too well for me because everything blows up. So essentially, I have some speedy elements um, on the left to try to outflank. I might be outdone because he outdropped me, so he was able to put the overmaster on the side as I feared. But the kind of the middle is just my slow moving kind of core of infantry that'll get there at some point. And then on the right side, I'm just kind of trying to hold the flank down with some flyers to threaten to jump over and the earth elementals to just kind of absorb some of the rats before they explode. So that's kind of the gist I went with. Okay. 
Uh, and Mark, could you walk <laughs> us through your deployment as well, starting over here on the left? Uh, so I've got basically a front line of exploding chaff. Well, basically my army is chaff. Uh, so I've got a front line of exploding chaff and then follow-up lines, uh, which will either jump over the top of or just follow up through and eventually jump over to uh, take on the uh, initial hit. Uh, the three hordes of uh, Black Souls, which may or may not, trade the tokens between them um and then at the overmaster trying to hopefully sweep ground uh the engines are gonna die <laughs> he's got so much speed I'm, I'm not gonna get many shots off before they die um but hopefully they can take something out okay uh, and you guys are lucky. playing he's got Right. It's quite lucky. His hit, most of his height is above height too. So okay. that was quite and, luck. And you guys are playing push, and you're using these red uh, red dots for the push tokens, right? Correct. Okay. So Devlin, you put your two on a unit of minute arms over here, kind of on the left side in the forest. And it looks like Mark, you put both of yours on a horde of black souls with a hammer of measured force all the way over here. On the yep. on the right side. Okay. All right. Great. I think that's all we need to know. So uh, good luck to both of you. Uh, we'll be oh, watching, okay. and uh, <laughs> and we'll we'll see you guys uh, back here when you're done. So have fun. All right. Bye. Thank you. All. See you later. How do I look? Noodles, noodles. <laughs> Like Mark, you have to leave. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, go. so are we are we looking at the classic sort of yin yang uh, push? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Looks like it. I think both of them have a uh, pretty good unit defensively. Pretty good units that they put them on, um, as far as the deployment went. I feel like we're going to see one of these where. It's going to be hard for either of them to stop the other one from getting their push tokens across, and I feel like we're going to see a bit of a need to battle for the middle. Right. To be honest. And like, the way it looks, um, I like Devlin's position for the middle right now better. Mm -hmm. But I'll have to see how that goes. But I'm glad to see that Devlin has the Pegasus, which I, the Pegasi, which I adore anyways in my own list, to go war machine hunting. That's what I love to do with them. They're so fun when you do that. Yeah. When he said they're one of the best chaff, I started thinking, I'm like, what's better than 80-point monster that has Pathfinder and Fly Nimble? Like, what more could you ask for? I don't know. My favorite for the Pegasus is when you play, like, rat Rays, and you're just like, okay, I'll just jump up there, blow that up, kill it it's 80 points go for it i don't care like, right exactly it's like that's that extra little scoring is lovely yeah beautiful mm -hmm. i'm surprised um, at uh devlin's positioning of the of the tokens though it, it's it's interesting to to be on those um the infantry with no pathfinder in the woods up against a couple war machines that ignore cover yeah um, that could be trouble if um mark goes first and decides to just try to delete them uh, more machines getting hot if they drop before they even get to move devlin's in trouble he has to put those on something with speed at that point and and yeah. lose that that element on that flank all right and devlin has won the roll for first turn and well, chosen to go first which is a good call mm -hmm. i think yeah, that was i think very, that was important very important yeah have we seen anyone this round really like go for picking if they win the roll everyone's been picking first essentially like the yeah. push is not one where you really want to go second. Definitely not. No. So many of these games come down to the token in the middle, and uh, having having the opportunity to move towards it first is pretty and big. Dictate how you're going to fight over it first. Who? Yeah. In the middle. So, uh, Michael, what do you think about this sort of flank denial uh, deployment of Marks over here on the left with this over flying over master? Is that going to hold Devlin up or? Do you think Devlin has something that he can easily just counter that with? Uh, I mean, I don't. I don't really think he has something that he can counter easily with, especially if those. Um, which are those? The, the flying one that's up there next to the token holders is that um, a unicorn or a beast of nature? As a Pegasus. Pegasus. Oh, Pegasus. Sorry, Pegasus or beast of nature. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're going to be on war engine duty. 
it kind of means he's yeah. got to keep these these uh, knights as kind of a goalie for this uh, this overmaster, which is not ideal, and and they're not great at it really. Um, yeah, and he's got water elementals over there on the other side of the men at arms with the tokens and a serger back there. So he's got a little bit of defense there, but that's still, I, I don't know. I feel like that's going to make it problematic for Devlin to get his tokens across the line if his, if his men at arms basically have to hide in that woods and hope that those two units can keep can keep the dragon off of him. Yeah, I, I kind of would have liked those knights and the water elementals um, swapped positionally. The water elementals are much better at protecting against the flyer since they could potentially go 360 to uh, to take it out, yeah. and then he could swing the knights toward the center. Um, they're, as it stands, they're they're not going to be able to do that. The, the knights, that is. Yeah, and I think even Devlin said he expected the overmaster to kind of go over on that left flank. So it's interesting mm -hmm. that he still chose this um, deployment. Agreed, and I think. Uh... One of Devlin's answers, the Redeemer with Blade, Blade of Leash Slayer, is in the very center here. Um, and it'll take yeah. him probably two turns to reposition, especially getting around that forest. But if he's able to get it over there and hold this uh, Overmaster off for a turn or two, that's that's going to be tr uh, problematic for Mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that probably is his best bet, because if he's, if he's going to send uh, the Pegasi, after the war machines, which it looks like it, there isn't really another great target for a redeemer with a blade, the beast slayer on the right side of the table anywhere. Right. I mean, yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. At least not to get the value out of the beast slayer. Right. Let's see what he does with it now. Yeah. That's, that's not a unit that, that you want to send suiciding into the front of a wall of, of boom, boom. Ratkin slaves that blow up. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, not so much. All that Ratkin slaves, they just, with the booming, they they feel dirty. And not like in a broken way, just they feel dirty. I don't <laughs> want to get blown up. I don't like getting blown up as it is. So So one question I had about Mark's list is I see he has the Overmaster on foot with the uh, Infernal Advance, the Strider item. Um, if I'm reading it correctly, I don't think he can take a magic artifact when he takes that aura. Uh, but he has the sacred horn on that overmaster. Yeah, and I think I think that's been clarified with other unique auras as well that you can take the take the horn with them and have it work, even though okay. it is a unique aura. It doesn't okay. make the unit unique. No, no, no. I'm saying that it specifically says when he takes the aura, it says this unique upgrade cannot be oh. taken in ad addition to magic artifacts. Oh, that's interesting. You're right. That's be weird that. Easy Army would let him. Yeah. Right. I think anyway. that because the, the algorithm on Easy Army is pretty good for catching that kind of stuff. Right. So I I didn't know if it was something that was just you know recently updated. I didn't look over the FAQ fully. That just came out, but I uh, wanted to see if anybody else kind of knew if that was legitimate. Yeah, I haven't seen that change in the um, in the FAQ that I can recall. So that, that may just be a mistake. And, that might just be a mistake. Yeah, I, I'm, and I mean, either Devlin will <clears throat> will call him on it or will just allow it. We'll see. We'll see right. what he does. But I feel I like there's we'll at least one other. Yeah, I feel like there's at least one other army that has a unique aura that a friend of mine plays, and he specifically asked people, "Is like, is it is it legit to take the Sacred Horn to expand an aura that you can only take one of?" And he got he got back a consensus answer of yes. So, okay. so yeah, it depends. Some of them specifically say you can't take an upgrade. Some of them specifically say you can't take a mount, and then some of them just say nothing, and you can take whatever you want with them. Right. Because I know the the Wilt Father. Uh, that was a big discussion. Yeah, that uh, I think that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. So you can take an upgrade with the Wilt Father, but uh, like the um, Cursed Pharaoh in Empire of Dust, if you want to make your mummies elite, you can't have a flying pharaoh that gives them elite as well. That makes sense. That's one of the things that I can see. Like, like I understand how that could kind of fly under the radar as far as easy army goes, because you have to kind of code those individually. Um, right. Which can yeah. be pretty tedious. And that's probably why it has the the text in easy army specifically. Um, instead yeah, yeah. of it just preventing it. But. Yeah, so that people can catch it, but then. Right. Yeah. 
I wrote it in my little notes for a question. In case there was <laughs> something that they like didn't know or so because everything we sometimes we come up with questions that like turn two and I think of them and then all of a sudden at the end of the game I'm like what happened in turn two? I don't right. Know. <laughs> I don't remember. Especially when I there drink was... wine instead of coffee during the game. <laughs> Well, you're drinking out of a wine glass, so it counts as wine. Well, because I, I, I have all my cups are stemless wine glasses. Because why have more cups than just stemless wine glasses? Like, fair point. Uh, I mean, I would say something about that, but thinking about it, I'm pretty sure all of my glasses are pint glasses. So, <laughs> yeah. There you go. But that's Some just for measuring. Like uh, actual <laughs> measurement. Okay. This is about precision. Yes. <laughs> I need to know exactly how much liquid intake I have. Yeah. There you go. And it uh, looks like he's moving on to shooting, so he'll probably be casting surge on something. Can we see can we see the um the range circles around the character in the middle? The the mounted character? Oh the mounted character, yes. And I believe he's speed. Eight. Yeah, speed yeah. eight. He's got a pretty versatile position right now. Um, he, he's not pushed over. I don't know. I, I don't know if I like the positioning or if I dislike it because he's. It's kind of non-committal. It'll take him an extra turn to get to either side of the board. Um, but that guy's pretty useful too. If he wants to go punch a horde of black souls, he may stand up a turn, letting um, Devlin clear some uh, some warriors out of the way first. Yeah. It looks like he moved him up far enough to be in position to hit this war machine mm -hmm. in the yeah. in the force. So yeah, yeah. I kind of if he's going to go war machine hunting, I kind of wish he would have gone after the one in the water because he's really the only one who can do that. Well, if he hits the war machine in the forest and then moves or overruns or even oh. sidesteps, he potentially threatens the next one, right? If if Mark well, moves up. Yeah, if, if Mark moves that, that warrior regiment up, at the moment he can only get into the front facing of the one in the water with the knight. Nothing else can hurt it. Got some, some tricky right. some tricky sidestepping going on over here. Yeah. yeah. So so if, if you're Mark on this turn, what is your... Oh, well, I guess that's what he's going to do then. He's going to try to come over here and protect his, his war machines. Because the rest of his army seems pretty straightforward right like they they just want to walk forward and brace for impact and that flying overmaster is kind of the only really flexible piece he's got mm -hmm. yeah, yeah but uh know. is he in range of these water elementals that's it looks close that's an excellent question three six nine twelve uh no he's just out okay and i think he's also is he within an inch of the Pegasus there? It uh, looks... Well, it depends on how they play it. I usually play the ring count uh, if you yeah. touch it, but yeah, some I think people he, say you got to clear it. Yeah, some he he might be taking that back because he figured out, he realized he couldn't both miss the building and be an inch away from the Pegasus. Which, um, maybe that's a good thing on Devlin's guess, or it was just a lucky a happy accident Maybe it was i think he's accident. trying to change the angle just a little bit right yeah, we'll see how it goes here honestly um, that just puts him that much closer to the redeemer which i don't know if that's really a good position for his flyer and i can't tell if he's touching that forest or not i think they'll they'll have to discuss that amongst themselves yeah right. if he wanted um, to be or not that's probably that's probably out of the forest, but it might be touching the terrain there. I don't yeah. know. It's very be a tight fit. It's not a great. It's a hard shape with the house. I kind of. It's got that little bit sticking out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this will be I, this. This will probably just come down to one of those things where like Devlin will zoom in and either say yes, you could put it there, or no, I don't think you can. You're within an inch of me, and or you're touching the building. Whatever. Yeah. But is that a good position? Because his Pegasus can just charge this winged overmaster, and then he has two or three units to follow up after that. Right, and I think I think the only the only kind of saving grace of it is that the forest is in the way, so the the redeemer will have to get into the forest to see it. The uh, the water elementals are a little too far. 
and I think these knights might be too far as well. So, they're, yeah, they're too far at yeah, the too. moment, but um, Devlin just punches it and moves the knights up, and now he's threatening the flank of the overmaster. It was a yeah. odd decision well, he gave up that flank superiority. How yeah. how reliable is the Pegasus to ground him hindered to? Well, the Pegasus has, has, has Pathfinder. 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 Three attacks on three oh, with Thunder's one. Different, different uh, thing. Yeah, so threes, threes and probably fours, I think. <laughs> yeah, so your average average is one wound. Yeah, yeah which is all yeah. you But yeah, still not a guarantee, definitely. Definitely still not. not a guarantee. But but a, a gamble that at this point I think I would take. Especially uh, because uh, the Overmaster can't see anything else, right? Because right. he can't have been in the woods having to go over 10 inches to get there. Right. right. And even if that corner right. was in the woods, he wouldn't be able to draw a line of sight through it still. Right. Yeah, that would that would actually be a worse position for him because then other things could see him, but he couldn't see anything. Else. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if it was me, I would have taken that over Master and sent him straight forward to try to get out of the those Brotherhood Knights line of sight and to just turn to face the flank of everything. Yeah. Which I'm sure. I mean, Devlin's a good player, so I'm sure that he measured it out or looked and made sure that that was not a viable move. That yeah. he couldn't just book at twenty and then turn. Right, because right. that's you know that that would be kind of the worst case scenario for Devlin. Yeah, yeah, and but even if he had, I felt like I would have moved up to just out of the knight's charge and kind of turned and faced everything instead of instead of doing this. Yeah, I agree. Um, so it looks like he's moved some of his expendable suicide bombers forward over here on the right. I like how in the comments, Steve has said, my favorite thing about this game will be the panel of relatively sensible people trying to cope with Mark's absolute <laughs> lack of grip on reality. And I think it's really cute because that's a very nice compliment. I've never been called relatively sensible. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Steve. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's a nice compliment for Mark. Um. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't know Mark in real life. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, when we when we brainstorm what matches we're gonna, uh, you know, broadcast for a given round, when, when we look at all of them, like some of them we pick because uh, you know they're they're high profile uh, for the tournament. Like last night we did table one, um, or is it like you know one of the top tables? Sometimes it's because they're they're very well known players, uh, like when we did Jeff Trace versus Dan King. Uh, sometimes we do it because uh, we think that the lists that they that the two players have been playing recently are particularly interesting. Um, and sometimes it's just uh, the personalities of these two players seem like they'll be so fun. We just want to see what they'll do. Uh, and I think, I think this match kind of fits into, that into category. that category of, of uh, if there was a way for us to safely let everyone listen to their in-game chat, um, it would probably be hilarious. Um, but we probably also have to get some sort of not safe for work warning for the channel <laughs> before we did that. Yeah. That's so great, though. Which, um, which, which is which is which for these black soul hordes? Uh, yeah, I can pull that up. So the f that Fromany move forward is the one with hammer of measured force. Um, the one next to it is the one with blessing of the gods, and the black one, the uh, back one, has roof strength. So if we zoom in to take a closer look at them. The the ones that are standing on kind of a green greenish looking river, I guess, has measured force. Uh, the ones with the silver armor are the elite ones, and the ones with kind of the black armor is the are the roof strength. I'm just happy okay. they're labeled because I'd forget that. <laughs> Let's see what he does with those back two because at the moment, yeah, surprising He's pushing them up so far. That now that unicorn can get in on that other rocket launcher or Pegasus. Yeah. I keep saying unicorn. Pegasus, sorry. Yeah. Uh, 18, yeah, it sure can. And it's got Pathfinder, so it doesn't matter that it's going to splash down into the pond when it does. Yeah. Boom. Just going to make like a big bird just landing in the water, water flying everywhere. <laughs> well, does the Pegasus reliably kill the War Machine? Because he does have his individual sitting back there, um, you know, ready to answer it. Yep. I mean, I think I'm shooting. So we'll see if these rocket launchers can do anything on possibly their only turn to shoot before things are on them. Yeah, and I would say too that the Overmaster 
Well, yeah, he's got the Strider Aura. So he's got a decent chance, uh, a pretty solid chance, actually, of, of getting the waiver on the Pegasus, but that's not a guarantee either. And that is two hits from the first rocket launcher on the uh, Men at Arms unit carrying the tokens. Okay. Yep. Five. On Strong start. Yep. Uh, that's, that's a is good it just straight D3? Yeah. It's just straight D3, and I think they're only piercing one. Piercing one, yeah. Yeah. But, no, it's, but that's, that's all, all damage. That's all of them, yep. Yeah. It's pretty great for these low defense targets. Yep. That is a really good opening shot. Mm -hmm. Let's see we'll see if the rest of them can follow suit. Obviously, at this point, no reason not to shoot at the same target. You've already put five wounds on it. And there's two more hits. Oh, wow. Oh, this. Okay. So only two this time. Small favors for Devlin there. Just the one. They're vicious. Oh, are they? Oh, right. Whistleblower. And so, too. Yeah. Yeah, vicious on war machines. So good. Pretty good. Turns out. Turns so out. A, a six to waver them. A six to waver them, and I don't. Yeah. This one shouldn't have line of sight around the water elementals. Shouldn't, shouldn't be able to see. Yeah. It's like he's going after the Pegasus. Yeah. I'll I mean, I'm, off a little... I'm sure he is, but is he inspired from the druid over there, or is he just out of six inches on the uh, unit that took arms. seven wounds. Yeah. He is inspired. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, one more hit onto the Pegasus here. That should be, uh, what, two wounds? Two, two wounds, wounds, yeah. Yep. Waver's on an eight. He may be stuck there. That would be a big deal. That would be kind of a big deal. So, pretty good first round of shooting there. I guess just don't inspire themselves. Is there anything inspiring over there? I don't see anything. No. no. There's the eight. There's the eight. If that was for the Pegasus. That was for the Pegasus. That's who the marker is still on. Yeah, but he yeah. just moved another marker to the regiment, so I'm not sure. No, there's a token, so I'm thinking. I'm guessing that that was a waiver roll for the uh, for the Pegasus. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so it was for the Pegasus. Ouch. So that'll keep that that uh, rocket launcher over on the right alive for another turn. To go poop poop. And there's a seven. Uh, that's a waiver, I believe. That is going to be a waiver. Oh. You know, and that's that's okay right now. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. really need to move them this turn. No. He just needs them alive. He just needs them alive. And he's got a little bit of heal. Um, and if he can shut down those those guns quickly, they should that's, be safer that's not going to be a huge deal. All right, moving on to turn two. All right, so if you're Devlin, uh, Adam, what are you thinking? Well, I'm your, looking turn here. And I think Devlin's actually making the right play here because this Overmaster can't see anything unless it touches the forest. Right. So the only benefit of charging the Pegasus in, and, you know, it's a mild gamble. It's essentially a 50-50 of whether he gets the wound or he doesn't. Uh, the only benefit he gets is he's forcing that uh, Overmaster not be able to fly, and it's going to stay where it is. But right now what it doesn't really have any options anyway so right. hitting the war machine protecting your unit with the tokens on it i think is probably the smarter call in the grand scheme of things yeah i think that's a smarter play because yeah as we expected he's gonna try to take out both war machines At the very least they're gonna do enough to disorder them so they can't shoot this turn yeah, yeah. i mean and there's still a chance he kills them it's nine attacks on threes Right. And it, the war machines are, what's their nerve here? I'm just looking to, and they're... Uh, they are 10-12, and the Overmaster on Ancient Wing Half-Breed is inspiring. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are defense 5, since they are Abyssal Dwarf war machines. Right. Um, Why not? Yep. But, like, certainly that, that, that Redeemer is going to tear that one up, because he's already got 7 attacks. That's going to be plenty. The Pegasus will probably at least disorder it. 
Yeah, I think right. it's going to wound. So, it, I mean, really, this Overmaster has the option of charging the Pegasus, potentially charging the Redeemer, depending on if he overruns out of the forest. Um, he potentially couldn't see him. But I right. think that Devlin's fine with a charge onto his Redeemer, um, especially a hindered charge. Um, I don't think he's going to go anywhere from that. Well, I think also if he does just, if the Overmaster does decide to charge the Pegasus, I think that puts, Devlin can put his knights in a good spot there to just. Right. And his water elementals. So essentially, essentially Devlin just doesn't want to move anything up into the force, but be able to threaten anywhere this Overmaster will go. Mm -hmm. And really, like that was a failed head, headstrong roll on those uh, waiver minute arms there. So they're going to be sitting still for the turn, yeah. which I think yep. is okay. Now, the only thing that I think Devlin has to worry about is if this Overmaster can viably pivot uh, 90 degrees like towards his knights and clear them. Just hop right over them. Yeah. Right. Which they, they probably can. Yeah, I think he's got the 20 to go for it. He yeah, probably can, but then water elementals. If he doesn't clear, yeah, enough right. that the water elementals can come up and turn, yeah. Right. Or he could even turn those. Uh, uh, what are the, I want to say, men at arms. Yeah, it is a men at arms. Yeah, men at arms. Uh, yeah. He can even turn those men at arms to protect against that uh, flyover and get a flank charge. They're not going to kill it, but at least they'll ground it, and then he can turn around his knights. All right, looks like he's moving up the Earth Elementals over on the right side. Um, his last breath piercing at all? Piercing two. Piercing two. It's not gonna. Piercing. It's not gonna worry them too much. Yeah. yeah. It's only bla two D three blasts. Is that right? D three. Yeah. yeah. For each. Okay. Sure. Yeah, that's yeah. not gonna hurt Earth Elementals too much. Yeah. Especially three. when you have a little bit of heal behind it. Yeah. Bigger problem is that they're lined up against the Hammer Measured Force Black Souls. Yeah, that is the bigger yeah. issue. Yeah. So I think, I mean, <clears throat> I know that I remember hearing this in the, uh, I think it was second edition RAT uh, Army review on Counter Charge, but is there ever a play that you just put those Earth Elementals in front of these two regiments and never Counter Charge? <laughs> just, yeah. Just uh, back up a little. Yeah. Everything is so jammed, jammed up over there, you could prevent that uh, Black Soul horde from getting across the line for who knows, most of the game. If the warriors come in and do no damage, you buy an extra turn of being able to do that. I can see they're talking about that. They were talking about that in the chat, too, that the spacing between the hordes of the Black Stoles is kind of close, and they're, they're going to get traffic damned is what they felt like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people were commenting and he does on have, that in the chat as well. Devlin does have these two flying uh, beasts of nature back here, and if Mark keeps pushing everything forward, he's creating a uh, a situation where they could potentially just fly over and then turn around and then then he'll be stuck between uh between a rock and a hard place i feel so bad for saying that i, I immediately regret it no, apologize never feel bad puns <laughs> puns forever if if the two beasts of nature both just fly over into the black souls with the tokens i don't think anything else can get on them except that one unit right no, I don't yeah. think so. Potentially the, the yeah rat slaves, which yeah, the this this horde shouldn't have the angle. Yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't have the angle to see know. them because they're fifties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one behind slide. them won't be able to get around because they're too close. Because this one's too close to the board edge. Oh. I, think, I kind of I kind of like that. Flank charge, yeah. That would be kind of sexy, and they should have range. I think he just slid one of the beasts over three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. 18, yeah, they could definitely get there. It would be be a double front charge. It would take a couple turns, but... Yeah, I was going to say, could... I think the problem is the potential, like, two-turn setup, because can two beasts of nature reliably kill that horde in two turns? Right, and and after that, fine, you kill it, then you have to pick up the tokens, then you can't just fly away, because then you're holding I mean, tokens. You really don't have to pick up the tokens. Right. You you actually, I think we talked you about you, you have to, in the rules you have to pick up the tokens. If you kill it in oh, combat, okay. you we must pick up the tokens. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. I, mean, I was surprised at that too. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't have any need to hold them at this point, right? So you can pick them up 
Okay. And then on his turn, just drop them. Um, That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That would be good. That or 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 do a fun thing where like uh, if you double charge, you kill those black souls. You put one token on east beast east beast of nature. Put one forward, one backwards, and make that backward have to kill both of you. To get get through both, both beasts of nature. Yeah. Yeah. He jumps them both over. Then he also can take out potentially all three of those rat units with his other units that are there and have the beast of nature in the way. Yeah. Uh, but it looks like Devlin's not doing any of that. He's <laughs> backing up and being more careful and conservative than, than any of us would in this, in this situation, I guess. I don't know. I'd probably have fucked this up long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Devlin is just sending his, his kind of expendable men-at-arms unit into the expendable exploding... Slave warrior units. Yep. And moving one up to potentially pick up that middle token. Turn to make sure he's in the front of this overmaster, although the overmaster can't see him. Right. That's what I was looking at. It's an interesting move. Yeah. But I guess if his plan is to pick it up and then just like walk that way with it to be on the other, to be like in between the two forests. That's true. He does and have he just, the double move option next turn with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if he just takes, so if, if if he just sends the knights in, sends sends the water ele elementals in, lets them take out the, the overmaster, right? Let lets them take out the dragon, and then sends his two units holding tokens just left between the forest and towards that other building. Just go hide uh, in that back corner. There's yeah, not just, much. Just go hide. Yeah. If you Mark, deal with that Mark overmaster. Really yeah. If you deal with that overmaster, there's really nothing that's going to get you over there for a very right. long time. Yeah, and, and hiding behind the force of the building, that third rocket launcher, even if it lives long enough, isn't going to be able to draw a line of sight to shoot at you. Um, yeah. Mark, Mark probably won't be able to get anything over there to challenge them. Interesting. I think Devlin, uh, what he does with the water elementals here, I think really determines if he sees the potential jump over from the Overmaster. Yeah. Because also he only has Surge 4 over there, right? Right. By the wall elemental, so you got to make sure that even if you, yeah, you don't want to be so far out that you can't even use your surge. And saying reliably that you get all four is kind of yeah, you goofy. don't. You don't want to <laughs> play that. Yeah, no. yeah. Surge four, yeah. even with real dice, you wouldn't want to plan for more than one ever. Right. And on UB, like mm. yeah, hope for two, plan for one. Uh, Devlin's a long time Empire Dust player, so I think that he he definitely knows those things when it comes to the surge options. Yeah, that's fair. It'd be interesting too how he positions the the Pegasus if it is able to kill that rocket launcher, because if it just turns around, then it would also protect that jump over. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. But then you're planning on that too. Oh, heal, I'm assuming. Probably heal, yeah. 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 Look at that. I guessed it. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Picks up one. Uh, which oh, is there. good because there's, there's nothing that's going to be able to put any damage on them next turn. So he can just slowly chip away at that damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that should be all of Devlin shooting because I think all he has is those two uh, druids with uh, heal and surge. Unless he's going to try to surge the Earth Elementals into one of those units of Ratkin slaves over on the right, but I don't know why he would do that. Yeah, I don't. I, I think he was in range to just declare a charge at the beginning right. of the turn. So right. before he backed up, right? Or before he moved? Yeah. yeah. All right. He's not going to be doing that. He's going to move on to combat. So it looks like we're going to see if that Redeemer can take out that rocket launcher in the forest, kind of in the middle there. What does it get? Fifteen attacks. Uh, twenty-one. Fourteen. I think he's. Oh no! It has seven base. Oh yeah, twenty-one. That's awesome. Yeah, twenty-one. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a dead rocket. Should be. Yeah, usually hits on threes, even hindered it on fours. And I think he's Ten crushing. Hits. Crushing two. two I want to say yeah. Ten hits. He's basically like a vampire seven wounds, without right? duelist or life leech, but he has regen. So I, I kind of like the exemplar redeem. Yeah, he has regeneration instead of life leech, which. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so seven hits on twenty-one dice. Definitely below average there. 
Oh, oh my goodness. One Did one wound. damage? One? But hey, I mean, at least he shut it down. Yeah. That was supposed to be the easy one. Yeah. All right. Now he's just going to make up and roll an 11 on the nerve, and <laughs> it'll just all average out. Ah, close. Okay. Right. Wavered. He can't be countercharged right. by the cannon. <laughs> no, uh, no battering ram rocket to the, to the right. face of the Redeemer. Yeah. It can't withdraw and turn and move now. Well, okay. Let's see if this goes better for him. Oh, actually, kind of hurt my hands doing that. It's kind of interesting because this is actually the one that he wants more. Yeah. So let's see if yeah. the dice come this way for him. Yeah, that's a good, good seven start. Seven. Dice. Three wounds. Three wounds. Yeah, it's average. Yeah, yep. that's reasonable. So it's big, average, uh, and uh, it is inspired. Nine twice, yeah. Seven. seven. That's going to be a waiver. waiver. Another waiver. Uh, so well, is Mark going to take that bait, bait and flank charge of that peg, or is he going to fly away? It's going to be the question um, for next turn. Or is he going to do something that ne none of us have seen? <laughs> right. right. Like, like charge charge into the wood at the at the Redeemer instead or something. Yeah, something I, don't, like that. I don't think that's the play, but, you know, when you have Why UV dice, that? anything could be the play. Anything could be the play. All right, moving on to the next combat minute arms against some Redkin slaves here in the middle of the table. Maybe. I feel like they're doing the like what they're hitting on and wounding on, and like letting us know in the chat there. Yeah. Which is like yeah, yeah. Like, that's what they're doing. That's taking the time. So seven hits. Seven hits on Start. twelve dice. This minute arms are probably in trouble though. Three. Three wounds. E. And a three uh, for nerve. That's not going to do much. Nope. No, oh, he didn't. He didn't back up that Pegasus or do anything with that Pegasus. So the no. one that has the two damage on it is just gonna get charged. Right. Yeah. I was. Uh, it was interesting to see. At the very least, a backup to get a potential hinder charge. But I guess he wants to threaten that rocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like if the rocket doesn't waver him or kill him, then he's coming for it. Right, or if these slaves whiff on their attacks, because I'm pretty sure one, if not two of those units are going to be in range. Um, maybe, yeah, all of them are in range. Oh, and he looks uh, like you wavered some of the rat slave boys. Yep. With that flank right. charge. Yeah, I think I think Devlin could have backed this Pegasus up. The what's it, three, six, nine, ten, the the inch and a half that he would need. To and get out of charge still, range and, and would still be in range to yeah, charge the gun. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on to bottom of two. So let's see what Mark decides to do with this overmaster. Because I feel like the the rest of it's kind of kind of predictable, right? Like uh, you only got a few other options. Right. I think it's kind of interesting with some of the. Uh, options that Devlin took for these men-at-arms charging because uh, I mean you want to kill these slaves and ideally your men-at-arms take those uh, exploding hits but I feel like he's just kind of throwing away his chaff elements to get a few wounds onto these units that your hammers are going to kill in one shot anyway mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> like that flank charge is nice like taking the flank but he didn't kill it. And I don't know if the dice would say that he would normally because he was hitting on fives. Right. Um, normally, open, no. Yeah, so opening that up. I mean, I guess he's looking at it as, like, that unit wasn't inspired. So, uh, you know, that's a, that's a reasonable thought. Uh, but this other one, I guess his thought is I'll, I'll either be charged or I charge them. Yeah, which is, a f might as well get the okay. first three damage. Right. So, so it looks like over here on the far right, Mark is multi-charging the Earth <laughs> Elemental Horde with two regiments of slave warriors coming off the hill. They may or may not be fully on the hill uh, to I get think, the, the TC1. I think the one on the right 
is on that was totally on or on enough. Yeah, the left one looked like it had more than half off the hill, but we'll see how they how they play it. Yeah. They may they may have agreed already that they were on. Yeah, just because yeah. there's like the the way the hill was angled, the left one might have been yeah. off. But yeah, over here in the middle, it looks like Mark does have a flank charge with uh, these slaves on uh, the, the men at arms that charged his other slave regiment last turn here in the center. Um, Correct. And the one. Slave regiment a little further to the right is still in charge range of the Pegasus. So if he wanted to, he could send one into the flank and one straight forward to ground the Pegasus. Um, but we'll see what he does. I kind of like if he takes that one that's uh, in the center of those three regiments, puts that one into the Pegasus. He's got so many. He's got so many regiments. He can do whatever he wants, really. But right. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So many regiments. So many, yeah, I think his list started with nine. I don't think he's lost yes. any of them yet. <laughs> the, whole, the whole first page of the list, for anyone who, who missed the list readout, is, uh, yeah, it was just nine regiments of slaves. Yep. All right. Yeah, what was the... Just... Um, yeah. Mark's essentially just made a, a lane... Uh, with all of his uh, dwarves here to just run up this right flank. Mm -hmm. And then he made a second lane to the left of it with all of the rats. Oh, mm -hmm. so he took a rear just charge. literally line up. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, I think I would have just taken the flank with the black souls. Yeah, that. it doesn't seem necessary. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's hard to resist a rear charge when you get the opportunity yeah, just rolling that dice, especially on the table, it just feels so good. Well, I mean, for people with big hands, it's a lot of dice. I got to do it in like three batches with my baby hands. You just need a big cup or a big wine glass. Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> Someone get me a plastic wine glass to shake my dice in. Because I feel like glass would be a little aggressive and I would probably break it. Yeah, probably don't want that. Make sure those are heavy dice in that glass wine glass. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to need some help cleaning up the table. There's glass shards everywhere. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, he is fully committing to this. Oh, my goodness. For this. Okay. Sure. You know what? Right. Whatever floats your boat. If you want to roll lots of dice, why not? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't really see the point of this. Because doesn't that leave him with nothing to ground the... Pegasus? I the, think the back the back tunnel save unit is probably still within twelve, no? Yeah. It looked like it. Oh, are they twelve? Oh, they're rats. Right. Yep. Yeah, I think we were looking at just ten. Six, nine, twelve. Yeah, they can't just get there. It'll be hindered because they're running out of the pond. Yep. But and what are they doing? Strider. Hit on oh, fives. Yeah. Strider aura. Aura. Oh, the strider aura, yeah, because he's still back there behind them. That's right. Yeah. They should do, they do two on fives. average, which I mean two might just kill it at a ten True. twelve. Right. Sure, I thought I got two wounds on it. 10, 12 okay. with no inspiring. Though this be madness, there may be method to it yet. Freeze up that rocket to take a pot shot over at maybe one of the beasts. True. Or possibly even these. No, I don't think he can get a shot in the line of sight over to the left side of anything important. Because he feels bad hitting water elementals. I mean, you do you. Yeah, I think he's only. I mean, oh, he's absolutely doing him. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't pushed that that um, slave wretch unit into the Pegasus yet, which worries me that he's just not going to do that and try to rely on the shooting. And the shooting yeah. is just too too fickle for that. Yeah, way too swingy. But Maybe you know, given can... given how 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 well Dublin rolled against <laughs> the other two guns, maybe he's, he's thinking he doesn't need to worry about it so much. Yeah, these rockets are just immortal. <laughs> they're not they're not shooting this turn, but hey, they're still there. Right. Part of the part of the thing is though, even if he doesn't even if he's not worried about the oh there we go. There we go. There it goes. Yeah. I was gonna say, even if he's not worried about the Pegasus killing the rocket, those rockets are still indirect, so the peg can just fly over and then he just can't shoot at them anymore anyways. And be safe, yep. Fly over, turn to face some of the other stuff that he wants to get into, like the black souls. Yep. But he is uh, going to try to deal with it. Yep. So Mark being very, very aggressive over here on the right side where he deployed basically his whole army. 
uh, here in turn two, just pushing everything forward, crowding onto units, throwing as many charges as he can. Now, the, the interesting thing, too, though, with, with push is that this still isn't, he's not committing his strength to win still. Because if he can't get to the that two wound unit and he can't get to the middle token. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which might be what he's turning this uh, last remaining slave unit for, that we'll make a play for that token. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two regiments of, two or three regiments of wretched slaves is not going to be enough to hold off the men at arms and the water elementals. Definitely yeah. not. You know. Still hasn't moved that that overmaster though. We'll see what he does with that. That's the kind of the wild card right now. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think Bart made a good point when we were talking about like why take that flank charge with the black souls and go so hard. And maybe it's to keep the army lines a little more intact. I don't know if that's a valid. But... Yeah, I I think the rear charge was the unnecessary part. Yeah, that was. Yeah, the I, I feel. Part. Like, yeah, I don't know. I would have rather seen uh, the flank into the men at arms from that, or the double charge into the Pegasus, uh, if he could have fit. I don't know for sure if he could, but I think those would have been a better option in the end. Yeah, I think he would have had room to slide over there behind the other men in arms. Yeah. And then. I think so. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I could see an argument to be made if there were things up in that top right corner that he was basically trying to pin in and keep their all game. But what what you got over there are earth elementals that weren't going anywhere anyway. Yeah, it's uh, just the other way around. Two, and two flying monsters, right? Like, um, and those knights, like, okay, fine. But the already wounded and wavered unit here uh, can pretty much keep those knights off of the black souls if they try to come in next turn anyway. So you don't need another. Right, you don't need to try to to walk this unit forward or turn it to a to soak up a night charge when you already have an expendable unit there to do it. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that uh, we kind of mentioned already, but Mark's positioning with taking that flank charge now, his his hordes are very boxed in. They're going to be moving forward, and yeah. as it is, uh, the back horde of Black Souls is only ever going to be able to charge something if both the hordes in front of them die. Because yes. you could easily put one uh, beast of nature into one of them to force them to sit where they are. And the the black souls behind are literally going to be stuck there even if one dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the this, this setup for Mark is, is not a bad one if you're planning to, to peace trade, but that's just... To, that's just not what's to Devlin's advantage right now. All right, it looks like he's made up his mind on this for this overmaster on the ancient wing half breed. Uh, he yeah. is trying to take the flank of the Pegasus. This is where some double ones on that Pegasus would be so sweet for Devlin and so so sad for Mark. <laughs> yeah, well, in, I mean, in that, many cases, this feels like a mistake. It does because it leaves them no way to get back out of the forest, and like these both these hammer units are now staring him down and can see him, and, and don't have to worry about him flying over them. Right, so they, so they can go right up where they want to be. Yeah. And effectively, even if he doesn't charge the rocket with three wounds on it, if he has the elementals and or the Pegasus, or not Pegasus, but the knight unit sitting in front of him, he won't be able to shoot at the target he wants. He'll have to be very, very careful on the reform of this Overmaster because he is just barely within 14 inches of those water elementals. And he can't really walk forward because his own gun's in the way. And he's going to be right on it, so it's going to make it very difficult for him to turn to face them and not be within charge range of both of them. And I think Um, he may have to play with the building he has here to prevent a double charge off of the reform. Yeah. He could possibly make it only a single charge. Um, But we'll see. Yeah. So it looks like he's using his throwing mastiffs over on the right uh, from the horde on the hill against one of the beasts of nature. One one nothing. Up. They don't have any peers, do they? Oh, they're, oh no, beast nature to four, huh? Yeah. Uh, no, they're defense five, but I think the dogs are piercing one. Are they? They have yeah. teeth. See. Oh, they yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, piercing one. Yep. And just imagine like this big bird, and it's just this flying dog coming at him. <laughs> Lobbed off a hill. Yeah. <laughs> Over some <laughs> earth elementals. 
So Felix in the chat here asks, uh, does Devlin just quit that flank and just let the two hordes of Black, uh, Black Souls score the two tokens, make sure he wins the other flanks in middle? Um, he could. I mean, that's that's viable. But he also could just not move. I think it really depends on if they if these um, Wretch Slave regiments do anything to the Earth Elementals. If not, I think everything as is is totally fine for Devlin. He just sits there. I think right. if yeah. he takes the right flank and just plans on getting his across, taking the middle, and slowing up anything that could happen on the right, then, like, he doesn't have to take the tokens from the Black Souls. He just needs to keep them from scoring, really, the two. Mm -hmm. No hits on the rocket this turn. Are the, uh, uh, yeah. Was, I was going to ask, um, the water elementals, are they in range to charge the flank of the... the Tunnel slave, the wretch slaves that have three wounds on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah they look to be. I kind of like yeah. that actually better. Just leave the knights to deal with the overmaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, heard it pretty good. Ground it and then seal off the center with those water elementals so that the yep. other men at arms can just grab that token. Yeah, men at arms here, pick up the middle token. Devlin takes all the tokens and just runs to the left side of the board. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to combat. We're going to see some die rolls here. Uh, so here's see what start happens with those the... elementals. Yep, start with the double charge on the element. See if they can put a dent in them or not. 24 on fives and sixes. Uh, nine hits. Mm. Two uh, wounds or four uh, if they're playing Thunder Charge. Yeah, he did roll them both together, so they must think that either both of them have it or both of them don't. And they thought both of them did not. Okay. Okay. A big nerve roll, but not enough for, what, dash 17, oh, dash 18 yeah. elemental or something like that? Waste, yeah, a waste of a good nerve roll. Yep. That's right. That would have been the perfect time to use some double ones up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out of the system. Um, so kind of going back to Felix's question, I, I don't think you can give up the right flank and just completely ignore it at this point. Um, because if you do, all of those black souls and all of those slaves are going to turn towards the center. Um, and then it essentially becomes a old Warhammer battle for the past situation. Um, so I think he still has to keep these threats over on the right flank so that he can control the middle long enough. Um, I don't think he expects to win this right flank, but more or less just delay. Right, so the rear charge uh, gave him five wounds on the men-at-arms over here on the right. Okay. And the flank charge now. Looks like we're giving him another five. Putting them up at 10. Men at arms are 13, 15. Yeah, I'm sure they're fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm like no. are they going to roll them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they're the Black roll. Souls. Yeah. Only Souls 23 hits. Only 23 hits, but he gets to re roll all those ones for Elite. Oh, only nine re rolls. <laughs> only nine re rolls, yep. <laughs> so 27 hits. There you go. 27 hits on 50 dice. No big deal. No big deal. And these are the uh, defense four crushing one. So 19 wounds from the one unit. A little like, overkill. Like a part of like, I feel like you could have just started with the black souls. Yeah. Definitely could have just started with the black souls. I think you could have <laughs> just, just like... ended with the black souls and not right. charge anything else. Right. There's a nerve roll of a six. That'll easily take them off with no inspiring source around. Would have been snakes twice anyway. Um, well, with 19 wounds, yeah. <laughs> and now, how does so? How does he reform these guys here? He's got his stuff all jumbled up there together. I think he he has the option of sidestepping with the unit that hit the rear. Mm -hmm. To give him a little more room, a little more yeah. breath. And then I would like to see a sidestep from the other uh, slave unit that hit the flank, just so mm -hmm. he gives his horde uh, a little bit of space. Yep. I love the sidestepping post-con combat. I think that was one of the best rules added into third edition by yeah. far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. it adds so much more versatility post-combat. Mm -hmm. There were so many times where you're like, well, I can't pivot where I need to because they're in the way. or Right. Anything. Yeah. No, oh, but I guess that was the actual first killed unit of the game, wasn't it? First blood. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought that first blood would not have been one of those um, 
nine red slave units. Red slaves, yeah. yeah. Or these uh, two war machines that got charged turn two. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I think we all would have lost that bet. Yeah, I'm still surprised that the which McCall that only did one wound on the with that 21 attack. Uh, the yeah, that was yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. What was it? Fours and threes or fours and yeah, it was yeah. fours and fours threes. Fours and right? threes. Fours and threes. Did one. Yeah. On twenty one days. Ouch. Right. That was sad. This is, is where Devlin's hoping for a complete whiff. Uh, only two hits. Ugh, the one wound did it. I'll put through one wound. Yep. That's all he needs. If only they didn't have Strider. Yeah, that would have been huge. Oh, they're counting it as two wounds? Two? No. No, no. Just one. There we there go. go. Yeah, That's not going anywhere. So it will stick around for another turn, but cannot fly. So that uh, that last remaining unengaged rocket will have one more shot at something. If I can see anything. No flying in, no nimble, no. Correct. Yep. Does uh, pretty sure it can see some beasts. It can see some water elementals. Oh yeah. That's an option. Uh, just two hits from the rats here in the middle. Only one wound. And a nine. Nothing yep, out of that. Mm. That'll be fine. Yeah, that's good. That's important. He's using some pretty good nerve rolls on some very low woundage, so. Yep. So another interesting thing here is that he has nothing that's going to threaten that uh, regiment that just was in combat. Uh, I'm talking the uh, uh, mark it, here. It's the Pegasus? Or you know about this Men-at-Arms regiment? Uh, yeah, the Men-at-Arms regiment. Uh, right. But he only had six hits against the Pegasus here. Five wounds. Six wounds. Vicious. Okay, so he needs a six twice. Or six ones. Twice. Yeah. Twice, is yeah. Gamer? That's fine. It yeah. is, yep. Well, it's an eight. And an eight. It. Okay, that'll do it. it. Well, now this is this is the, the question. Where do you go yeah. from here? Where do you go? In life and in the <laughs> game. I mean, I think you have to just turn to face your imminent death. Yeah. Turn yeah, and you can really only do like a complete turn. There's um because he's right up against his Oh, no, I guess he bit. could potentially sidestep towards the bottom of the board, and if he gets a three inches, he could block uh, a charge off from uh, using the mortar and the building. That would be, yep. Yeah, that would but be clever. That, but, it, but that's, that's also real risky. Big gamble, yeah. Mm -hmm. Three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, you. it wouldn't put you out of range of the knights, but they would not be able to fit. But it looks like he's not going to bother rolling the dice on that. He's just going to turn and face, so he will be three, six, nine, twelve. 13, 14. I think he is just in range of the water elementals. Yeah, and he may have been here. able to do it out of that. Yeah. It was it was close. It was it would be tough, I think. Yeah. He would have to he would have to pay a lot of attention. Alright, go anger piglet. <laughs> That's it. All right. So what I was saying, the uh men at arms regiment that took one wound in the exact center there. Yeah. Um Mark didn't reform or face anything to look at that unit. Um, so if he kills these slaves this turn, um, there he just kind of has a free unit to you know wreck a little bit more havoc, threaten some more flanks. That's going to potentially delay Mark another turn. He could have just reformed one of those units, uh, one of those rat slaves, either the one in the rear or the mm -hmm. other one, to face back towards the center. Yeah. Uh, because it seems like Mark's really ignoring the center most objective at this point. And well, so it looks like Devlin is sending the Redeemer into the side, and we'll probably be charging the Knights in the front as well. This Overmaster on each wing half breed. What um, elementals have range to that other rocket? The one damage rocket? No, I don't think so. They do yeah. not. Yeah. But they do still have okay. a flank charge on these slaves over in the middle. So risky leaving a rocket to potentially shoot at your token unit. Yeah. Right. Could he get the token unit? No, I don't think so. Within 12, so he can't be shot at? I don't think he can because he had to stand still last turn, right? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, he would need to get out they're, of the they're Or not hindered, but they don't have Pathfinder. They can't just yeah. run through, yeah. yeah. Right. It's interesting. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm kind of surprised he didn't leave the whatchamacallit in against the um, war machine. What The little boy on the... Yeah, I'm bad. Yeah, the, uh, the Redeemer. Well, he does yeah, have Blade of the Beast Slayer, so I think he's he's planning on trying to add a few wounds to make sure he kills the Overmaster. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that he needs to kill the Overmaster, right? He just needs to keep it on the ground. It can't go anywhere because it's stuck between the gun and everything. The gun right. can't see anything other than the knights because they're right in front of it. And, you know, so so then the Overmaster can, look, what, back up, disengage from the knights. The gun can't shoot because they're too close. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, the Overmaster's... Well, I guess the Overmaster, if he positioned it correctly, could potentially disengage and back up um, this next turn if he doesn't die. And like we were saying, that rocket blocks off the ability to charge him. Sure. Sure, but but at that point, if the Redeemer had stayed on this gun with one wound, killed it this turn, mm -hmm. sure, the Overmaster backs up, then he gets a Redeemer in the side who will ground him. The Knights that's kill the other gun, and then he's pinned in again and can't block. That's and, true. And yeah. even beyond that, the position that Devlin put himself in, the Redeemer is snug up against that um, rocket. So, so now Mark actually can just back up five inches, and the Redeemer wouldn't be able to see him either. Yeah, because he can't pivot. Now he has to kill it this turn. And now he has to kill it. So he's going all in. Yeah. A waiver won't even do it because he'll still be able to make that move. Yeah. Yeah. This will be able to back up. Hmm. And does he have room to straight back up without hitting the building, though? Because he'll lose Nimble if he's grounded. Correct. I don't know if he does. It's close. He might just yeah, clip close. that building and not be able to go back any farther. He might clip the building and it might not let him go back far enough. Can you click on it um, and see the arcs? Yeah, I think he actually would bump the building. Yeah, and in that case, then Real he's going like one inch, which isn't going to save him. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right. I find Devlin's use of these water elementals very uh, passive. Yeah. He, he might be planning on... Just letting oh. them hold the pass, basically. There. Yeah. Right? They're like in position not, to not just. Commitment. Yeah, they can sidestep and pick up those tokens if those men at arms die at this point. But, That's what I was yeah. kind of wondering if he was doing is standing there in case he does take another round of shooting and die, then he can pick up the tokens and still bugger off the other way. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but then no more. And I guess he's also threatening a counter charge against anything that charges the unit that just picked up the middle token. The middle token, yeah. Well. Kind of feels though at that point like he is um, giving these water elementals too many jobs. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I think I would have gone for the flank charge on the on the slaves here in the middle. Yeah, and just gotten rid of them, and and now your water elementals would be over here to screen the guys who just picked up the token. And then you'd and have then, both a, a unit of men and arm retainers and a unit of water elementals completely pinning Mark's stuff all the way over here on the right. Yeah, um, it would be like this big wall, walled off all the tokens. And then the only thing left over there is the Overmaster, who may be dead. Or at oh, least oh, here, he goes. here comes the double charge. Here comes the double Beast of Nature charge onto the Black Soul Horde with tokens on the hill. Yep. But now is he going to be able to get stay out of um, line of sight of the second horde on the left because of the where the f unit is, the angled unit's regiments are? Yeah, he's That's not going to be able to tuck out. in all the way. Um, interesting. It really depends what he does then with the knights, I guess. If the knights come in... Yeah, I think the knights have to come into that regiment. Mm -hmm. um, Get all up close to personal. Yep. Yeah, because otherwise he's gonna they're gonna just run up and then he's gonna He could slide over a little more with those with Yeah, with he this. doesn't slid all the way over. He, yeah, he, he really, really should. <laughs> he really, really should. <laughs> this is where we're like, Devlin read our minds. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll slide the thing. Move over. <laughs> I still don't think it would be I'm enough. completely impartial and not at all rooting for anyone. <laughs> I would never. This is where you say Devlin sucks. Yeah, Devlin, the worst, the worst <laughs> human corn dog. He could, he could actually still protect that flank though, just by by moving up the knights, because yeah. then the, the six wound, the six wound unit is still blocking the black souls. The well, black I think souls. also, I think also that one regiment would have to see if he 
because it looks like he countercharged the Earth Elementals into the mm-hmm. one regiment mm-hmm. on the right. But if yeah. he countercharged the ones on the left, they wouldn't probably be able to get out of the way. So I don't think he could have made that. It might have been hard to make that flank charge work as well. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of angly things, and everything's very tight together. So. Yeah, I guess he's not necessarily done. We'll see if he does anything with the knights. Oh, so he might be taking the... Okay. Just, gonna, just going in. One. So, yeah. Interesting. I guess he okay. values these earth elementals being able to um, get into the fight a little bit sooner. I guess so. Or he's just keeping all of his stuff together and just kind of sweeping around as, as one force instead of splitting off. Right. It's, it's also kind of worth noting that if if he feels confident that he can secure those other three objectives, which it looks like he should be able to do, he's kind of playing with house money on the right hand side of the board, and he's just looking for attrition points over there. That's true. That's true. And, and having the knights and the earth elementals there, just steadily pushing forward, because like if he if he kills both these regiments, walks forwards, and keeps you from coming off the hill with your two tokens, then he he holds you to just having two points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then even if for some reason he if he keeps him on that side and he only ever has that two points, even if for some reason he were to lose the middle token, Devlin probably is still getting two tokens across and getting that four points. Yeah. As long as this rocket doesn't kill him. Yeah. But then so see if he can see if he can get a big heal here with his heal two on them. Does not get One anything this turn. I I don't think there's ever a big heal when you have heal two. Sure. There's a <laughs> something. <laughs> I'm probably looking for a bane chant, maybe. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, maybe a heal roll. I'm already wounded. Oh, yeah. going for bane chant. Okay. And with okay. a third. That would have been a big heal. Big two. This was a bane chant to, to which unit? Uh, the, the beast of nature that has one wound that's on the hill against the black souls. Oh, I see. On the right. Interesting. I don't know. I, I think I would have valued the heal more at that point. Yeah. And I still don't like here in the middle. Like, I don't like that, uh, you know, Mark has this slave regiment uh, back here kind of kind of facing things. And, you know, I I feel like having having the water elementals over here, having to take this flank, having the water elementals in between. The yeah. arms just picked up the token and this. Uh, I mean, granted, it, it's going to be a hindered charge from the slave warriors, but then no, still yeah. he, he has Strider. Oh, he's got a Strider order behind him, so it won't even be a hindered charge. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he really should have sent the water elementals in to the middle there. But you can see that um, Devlin did back up the Pegasus that had the three wounds on it, putting him into the terrain. So now yep. that mm-hmm. that regiment is too far, and it will be a hindered charge if he charges back in on the Pegasus. Yep. Yeah, but he's probably just going to shoot it at this point. There's nothing yeah. better for that rocket to shoot at. Anyway. And I don't think he can get yeah. to the rocket now if he doesn't get wounded. That's a good start. He had five hits, five, five hits, five hits from the redeemer, from seven, yeah. and he needed fours, and all five wounded. So yeah, winning on twos with the blade of the beast there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Really good conversion there. Okay, let's see the knights. This overmaster is what a seventeen nineteen nerf. Yep, he's standard dragon. Yep. Just with one less attack. Effectively down now to the nerve of one of the the wretch units, which the knights could just take out at this point. Yeah. Threes and threes. Threes and threes. So 12, 12 hits. hits. Great start. Yeah. Eight wounds. Eight wounds. Pretty Seven average two. there. Yeah, 16, so average. Six, six twice. Six twice. Can he do it? Maybe. Big nerve roll here. Yeah. That's a waiver. That'll be a waiver. That's fine. So we'll see if Mark if Mark realizes the the backup trick and if he can clear that building. Yeah, Mark Devlin yeah. will let him slide by it. Well, I think also with UB, right? Like when you're backing up straight, if you've got your Y X axis on, um, he might clip that building because I don't think he would be sitting on top of it where that corner is. So it might be easy mm-hmm. to tell too. Mm-hmm. So it's always a little harder IRL. Right, so going on to the men-at-arms here in the center against uh, counter-charging against 
That's things. Very good start. Mm-hmm. Very good start. Eight hits on 12 attacks, looks like. Well, yeah. that averaged out. Came oh, back yeah. to average, yeah. <laughs> Six to waver, eight to break. Seven on waver. Seven, so that will be a waver, which is pretty okay, I think. It's probably ideal. Yeah. Overmaster, I think, is within eight of those men at arms. So now he can't actually get in there and charge them. Right. And and these slaves don't blow up this turn. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't have to worry about that men at arms unit taking more damage. I guess maybe that was part of Devlin's thought process, is he wants to mitigate the amount of units that get hit by the last breath. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. If you double charge there, that's double the value. So. Yeah, but he also could have just flank charged the water elementals and not charged the men at arms. Yeah, it's very true. All right, over here on the right, the Order of Redemption against Slave Warrior Regiment. That's going to be 16 hits. Yeah, they are in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. 13 wounds? Yeah. <laughs> so, another interesting play by Mark here. He has absolutely no inspiring over on the right flank, where he's basically putting all of his bets. Well, he has very little inspiring. He does in the list. Right. Uh, so even with a even with a nerve roll of three, Devlin picks up that uh, that regiment of slaves. So it can go boom boom. They will now get a last breath roll against uh, these these redeemer knights. The first I explosion. like boom boom better, but sure, we can go last breath too. <laughs> we need some uh, ex- explosion uh, effect for these. Yeah. Threes to damage. Yep. I think that is Devlin's first actual kill of the game so far. Mm-hmm. So is that one round or? Was... Oh no, they're ruling it now. I just couldn't. There remember. is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> those are even D threes. He rolled D threes and still did four <laughs> wounds to himself. <laughs> 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 hmm. See, okay. Mark says it's a boom. I said it was a boom. <laughs> Let's see if uh, Devlin decides to change his dice back to D6s before the next combat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did. Oh, uh, there we <laughs> I don't know. The four wounds on D3s was a little more impressive. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. That was pretty great. Oh. <sighs> All right. Now, what does he do here? Does he sidestep? What's the arc like on the um, the so there's those three front ones, the the middle one of the um the wretch units, that one there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you push forward. Okay. So I think I don't know yeah. if he, if he bumps the six wound one, that might be a flank. It's like he just backed up one inch. Yeah. Huh. Alright, now he's now he's gonna flank by that that other unit. Can it yeah. get it? Yeah, it can get it. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. For sure it's easy. If Mark sees it. Shh. Yeah. I don't know if I like backing up there. I don't like that. No, I think I like going forward. No, I would have rather seen a sidestep or a because if he sidesteps even I think two inches, he may block his flank with the building. Yeah. So it looks like eight wounds uh, from the earth elementals onto the other slave unit here. And they now have Brutal because they weren't good enough before. And, and a nine. Yeah, that, that'll That's get him. That will make enough. him go. So there we go. Boom. Likewise. Or boom, boom. Three. Three at piercing two, right? So he's looking for <clears> fours. Uh, no, four. He rolled he D3, rolled so four. Yeah. Oh, D three. Okay. Two so wounds. two wounds. Two wounds. And this is where I think the value of the heal would have been better than the bane chant, because bane chant on seven attacks just doesn't feel doesn't feel good. Yeah, those beasts are already crushing two, right? Yep. Yeah. So they're already they're already wounded on threes. Right. I mean, wounding on twos is vi- with vicious is great, but but it's only seven attacks. So what are you going to do? Convert one, maybe two. Right. Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, but I think that is the only combat left to do is the double beasts yep. on the Black Souls on the Hill with two tokens. Uh, as soon as Devlin decide what, decides what he wants to do with the Earth Elementals, and since he backed up the Knights, his options are kind of limited here. Right. Side stepping would have given him some more space. This Looks like he's forward. going forward. I think that's yeah. the only option he had besides doing a mm -hmm. crazy reform. No, he tries to back up. Okay. okay. So he backs up to pin himself against the table edge. Interesting. Not sure why. I feel like he would have keep pushing forward. Can this, uh, does the slave unit that has six wounds on it have sight or arc? I think they do on the back corner of the earth elementals now. So the way the board edge was positioned, it looks like his earth elementals are slightly ahead. So I think he could declare the flank charge. Yeah. Onto that. Turn enough to touch. Yeah. So so he needs to turn enough to just touch the corner. Yep. Yeah. All and right. Moving on to the why blocks the off too. Yeah, I feel like if you had measured that, you would have noticed that that was gonna. Like if you're gonna clip the board edge. Nope, it got him one extra wound for the bane champ. It did get him one. Yeah. Yeah. So three, and then the other one. Ooh. And I think also now, leaving him like going backwards opens up more opportunities to get in on the flank of that beast of nature. I think too. Yeah. It does. Uh, yeah. So three, three more wounds putting the black souls up to six. Um, that's not going to be enough. Even with an eight. Yeah, no, they're fine. Definitely not. They are 21, 23, so they are fine for now. Can we get a zoom on the beast and beast of natures again, just to see positionally where everything is? Yeah, the flank is there, but it's, it's going to be a tough one to, to get to. I think Mark would have to move so much just out of the way to places he doesn't want it to be. Yeah. It might not be worth it. I don't think he can take that flank charge on the elementals that we were talking about, which yeah. in all reality isn't going to do much of anything anyway. Um, I think he wants to block them by getting in front of them, or would prefer to do that. But... And I don't know if this horde is even able to fit where the knights are. Right. Um, so. True facts about the seahorse. Are the uh, Black Souls able to charge the Knights? Are they within eight inches? Looks like they are. Yeah, but those those rats are just in the way. Which one would go to which side? I think the... Um, I think the rats right. go to the left side. Yeah. Which means that he would not be able to declare it because the Earth Elementals are overhanging. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. So it looks like it it is working out all right. Um, if the knights had backed up two inches, they would have been out of charge range of the black souls entirely. Um, so does Mark have the ability to run these slaves with six wounds out of the way so that he could get a charge on those knights with his black souls? Here comes a shot to the Pegasus. I, I suppose after <laughs> after the movement phase, of course. After, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, that was quick. <laughs> Can I charge everything and shoot? <laughs> Sounds like an Abyssal Dwarf game plan. Yeah, three rock lo uh, or uh, rockets alive here on top of three, and all of them able to shoot is surprising yeah yeah but their target selection is pretty limited and that's kind of the problem you run into when you run a, a list like this where you just have so much stuff that you plan to be getting in the way and and kind of just boxing with stuff like i don't know that i like three war engines i kind of like them for the purposes of picking up units after uh later in the game but um it doesn't seem like positionally mark uh Mark was looking to do that. And so there's the charge in the center that we were kind of expecting the slaves against the uh, 
men at arms have picked up the center token. They will not be hindered because the Overmaster is there with the Strider Aura, which now in turn three I finally remembered without having to be reminded. <laughs> uh, and we'll see what else he does. It's interesting. Uh, you know, this is so far it's a bit of a slap fight, right? Like they've only routed a couple hundred points here at uh, bottom of turn three. A lot of waivers. A lot of waivers. Not a lot of routes. Uh, so it looks like he is going to try that flank charge into the Earth Elementals with the uh, slave unit. And, and this wounds, right. potentially clears the way for the Black Souls to get into the Knights. Possibly, yeah. They might be able to catch a corner. It's really but just I, how they're going to are they going to fit to the side of the building? If right. They, yeah. If the red unit gets far enough over so that their back corner doesn't block the black souls from coming straight forward. Right. And just kind of eyeballing it, I don't think so. But. So they could still come up, swing mostly 90. But do they fit on the building now would be the next question. Yeah. Well, definitely with the, with the slaves here, he cannot get in on the beasts of nature. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't he declare counter charge on the far, far right beast of nature slide? Or no, it wouldn't slide. He still would slide left. Yeah. He would actually he would slide, slide left. left. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. the beast of nature never moved over far. Couldn't move over far enough earlier. Correct. Yeah. Oh. He is taking that flank, which yeah. is a good choice first. Yeah. 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 It's the same with. The frontage is the same width as the flank of the knight, so it doesn't really change the math for the frontage for the black souls. Right. Everyone keeps asking in the chat, I'm drinking a giant glass of iced coffee. It is not chocolate milk. Oh, that would have been better. Mm, no. It's noon. I need <laughs> coffee. Getting up for a 10.30 stream, that was tough, okay? <laughs> hey, it was 9.30 mine time. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with hitting the flank, now that limits his options as far as potentially being able to complete this charge. So he has to move forward and hopefully angle just enough to skirt by the slaves in the flank of the elementals and then connect with the front first. Yeah, but it, it's so close. He, could, he almost might be able to just go straight forward. But if he has to pivot, it would be a degree or two, which shouldn't prevent him from from touching the frontage i think it's i think he may not fit though is just the problem right right so they bump the building final final position uh he's charging with just oh, the taking these in. this is actually a harder charge to complete really i don't even know if those can can make that charge no he can't he, he's got these guys in the flank in the way he's not gonna be able to hit the corner he'd have to come all the way up 90 degree pivot and hope that the front left corner touches, touches. that Frontage okay. before the front right corner touches the six wound unit. Yeah. Right. Risky business. I think you you have to try with the black souls. With them having three wounds on them, like this is yeah. these regenerating knights, this is one of the best shots you're gonna get to take them out. Yeah. True. And also, if he does that, he's not able to double charge the Pegasus that has three wounds on it. Mm -hmm. I, it's it's a gamble if he just takes one of those units into it. Well, I think that the better choice to do for dealing with that is just to shoot at it with the rockets. The three wound rocket doesn't have anything else to shoot at. That's true. That rocket is available. Yep. Okay. So oh, here's here the charge. Goes. Okay. He went straight forward, so it looks like he maybe yeah. just uh, was able to tuck in there. Yeah, but can he come in and yeah, move in? I want to see. I see some green to the right of the horde. He might be able to come over another little bit. Oh my goodness! I think Snug is a bug in a rug. Barely has it. Yeah, I see a green pixel. He's in there. I see a green pixel. One pixel saved you. All right. And that's where Devlin was really hoping for at least a two on his backup. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I still but think he, you, it was just a mistake to, to even do that, though. Yeah, if he sidestepped, this whole thing would have been right non-existent. 
Oh, wait. Really, if you just push everything forward, he, like you want to oh. keep traffic jamming them, he shouldn't be giving them more space. Oh, maybe they said he didn't fit. And also, I think if you moved forward, there was um, you were out of some of the arcs too, right? I can't remember whose it was, but I remember oh, being out of. They're just redoing it. It looks like to yeah, make sure it's confirmed. Straight. Yep. So he's moved straight forward. He's made contact, and here's the pickup in place. So evens up. Okay. Slides over. Gets close. I think the angles just about right. There it is. That's the right side. And he's look. not overlapping with the regiment at all on the right. Yeah, we want to make sure that so. looks good. It's hard to tell. Because of the overhang. No, I think he's so. Oh, he's on his unit a little bit. I think. Yeah, yeah get, but he's like, right up in here, guys. Hold on. To touch over the right side yeah. of that of that. Which would be in. He needs yeah, to. The, the back corner is off a little bit. Yeah, he needs to turn a little bit more. Game of millimeters. Um, but I think if he. But think he, think he it looks to me like he. I don't see any grass between him and the building. As as far in as I can zoom, and I don't see any grass, but uh, I don't know how they're going to call that. I think I would allow that if I was playing an opponent and they said, is that good? I'd be like, yeah, you're, you're right up on it, but you're not over it, is how I would call that one. Right. Um, I would also be fine if somebody wanted to dice that off with me in this playing play with a, you know, a virtual tabletop like this. Yeah, that is... That is a close one. That is that is as close as it gets. That is. But it's zero zero pixel margin of error. Now, oh. actually, real quick, um, is his rat unit that's flanking the earth elementals in the correct position? Because I'm taking a quick zoom in, and it looks like they oh. might be overhanging. I think they might be. Yeah, they're they're a couple of pixels into the earth elemental unit so if they were only just touching where they would be that would bump the black souls into the building um that but is... it is not our place to say no. um and it looks like he's trying to see if he can get this other unit of slaves into the beast of nature but he's definitely not going to be able to do that they're in the front yeah yeah that's Yeah. Interesting. A whole lot of charges going on. Turn turn three is generally the turn where stuff happens. <laughs> you spend your two turns maneuvering and moving stuff up, and then turn three, it's time it's time to go in. Let's see if uh, we line things up right. So we have to pay attention now. Right. Steve's calling it cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Say it, scandal. Scandal. That's right. We do not uh, we do not comment to the players about the legality of anything they do unless they specifically ask us to rule on something. So wasn't there one cast we did where we were like, I don't know if that was in range. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that yeah. was that was out of the game. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I didn't bring that up in front of you. Well, yeah, we well, I mean, the first the first stream oh, that I, we did, I, I think, it. I watched back and I saw your face, Ashley, and you're like, "This guy's an idiot." <laughs> <laughs> That's not quite true. <laughs> I think I think the first cast that we did, the players actually did ask us to rule on something, um, so we did go jump into their Discord channel and find out what, what the issue is. But other than that, everybody's just uh, played the game as if we weren't here, which I think is it's probably the best way to do it. Like. Yeah, I think sometimes people have asked it in the chat, like, can I actually do this? Does it look right? And we've been like, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I think sometimes you just want that extra opinion. And even on the tabletop, sometimes you have to grab the guy next to you and be like, does this work? Does this look legit? Or am I just oh, making yeah. shit up? Right. No, I totally do that at tournaments sometimes. I'll look around and be like, who is the who is the smartest person at the table near me? Like, where's where's the next person that's also a TO that I can ask a rule? Yeah, it's gonna be like, this is why Mike never calls me over. <laughs> uh, now, Mike, uh, here's the real question: How do you gauge intelligence? Uh, I have a very complicated system for doing so. Yeah, very complicated. 
first I look around to see if I can see Alex Chavez. And if I, and if I can see him, I just ask him. If we're in the Northeast, then I look around to see if I can see Corey Reynolds. And then I ask him. Yeah. I think the worst is when Brindley's close to me. And sometimes I've grabbed Brindley. And Brindley's like Tito events and stuff. But then it's bad because if he's the closest person, people always think he's going to rule in my favor because he's my spouse. But they little, little do they know. He'll walk by and be like, Ashley, you're a fucking idiot. Why'd you do that? And then walk away. <laughs> so more often than not. Oh, so he charged you the Black Souls into the Pegasus? Uh, no, he did take the double charge uh, with two slave regiments on the Pegasus. Oh, it's just, I was going to say, I'm like, what is in there? I'm so confused. And it looks like maybe he moved the Overmaster over to get close enough to both of them so that they would not be hindered, given the Strider Aura. Mm -hmm. That's super secret, boosted Strider Aura. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark has only a couple of units that he hasn't charged into something yet this turn, so I guess he's trying to figure out if he can do something with them. It's like, I want all of them in combat. The um, the rocket that's in the water, what can it see oh. over on the left? Does it have, if it has arc to the meta arms, it, no, it doesn't look like it does. I don't, yeah, I, it might not even have arc with the water elementals, would be blocking line of sight. So I guess he's just going to shoot at the water elementals with that one. I guess. He's charged at everything else. Or I guess he, 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 he could shoot at whatever beast of nature he doesn't counter charge. Does he have up on the hill. as well? No, he, he, he can't see that one either. Yeah, it is just out. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and he does have this gun that's not doing anything. So both of them could double up on C three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, he can just shoot the water elementals with this gun with one wound on it. The three wound one, the three wound rocket, is its line of sight completely blocked up by the knights, or does it maybe have a line to the water elementals as well? I think I it think can it, see. It may I have a line to them. Yeah, so maybe just yeah. th drop all the rockets on the water elementals. Yep, triple up. There's a lot of boom booming going on, I like it. Yeah. I'd probably just start with the, the two outside ones, see what they do. And then you can decide if that one damage one wants to try to pop out the men at arms or not. All right, so he threw his dogs from the from this back inner black souls at the piece of nature that didn't have any wounds on it yet, which he hadn't counter charged. For two damage in there. For two damage, yeah. Um, Mike, do you want to check his Adam back in the waiting room? Oh, sorry. Oh, I just messaged him. That's why. Why? Thank you. There you go, Adam. I got you. <laughs> this is a rocket, too. Yeah. Okay. Be the rocket's on the element. Yep. Uh, yeah, because you can see from, from the ruler there through the forest that he was checking to see if he had line of sight on the unit carrying the tokens. And does not. So it'll be opening up on the water elemental. Because he's charged absolutely everything else on the table that he could. Why not? You bring nine regiments of basically expendable units. What else are you going to do with them other than charge everything in turn three? Yeah. Yep. Next gun, same target. Looking for fives. Oh, no, that one. Yeah, that one has yeah. Line of sight, right? yeah, that one does have weird. line of sight. For sure. uh, that's a better shot. Oh, and two, two hits. hits. Two hits. It's going to be bad. They are inspired by the druid back there. So kind of low. Yep, yeah, just three. They three. might be able to take that. Mm, two wounds? Uh, two wounds, oh, but they're vicious. vicious yeah, because so why that'll be not? three. three wounds. So that so will put them at nine. nine. Jinx. Break them on a six twice. They're not sure. on a six yet. twice. No. No. I don't think so. God, I hope not. No, they're, they're not heavy uh, orders. Okay. They are not. Whoa. I'm completely impartial wow. here. I swear. That's a seven. That would get them. Uh, but he'll need to re-roll. It depends what that was at. Is it? Hmm. Oh, an 11. an 11. I assume he's still rolling that because he's got the token on it, but maybe not. 
Yeah. As we as it was we a wait mistake. to see, it was a mistake. You just didn't need to let that shot happen. Yeah. And that'll do it. Yep. All right. So next turn, the Earth Elemental step sideways, pick up those. Excuse me, the Water Elemental step sideways and pick up those tokens. But then they're kind of in a position where, well, I guess they can. Hmm. No, they're just they're just in a bad spot. They got to pick up those tokens now and can't charge because a gun or can't take out some stuff. Yep. Yep. So I kind of lost connection there. So uh, I guess one of the things that um, I forgot about anyway is that the um, oh, winged overmaster would not be able to do the withdraw since he's engaged on two fronts. Oh, good point. Right, because you can't move. You have to end farther away, not the same distance, right? And so you just you're just not a you're you're not allowed to make the withdraw move yeah, if you're engaged engage. on two sides. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he can't do the free one inch withdraw, but he can still make a normal move action um, as long as he uh, clears the one inch. So this was a unique situation that came up in one of my games, and I got a, a clarification from uh, from the rules committee. He would be able to back up, but he could only back up six inches, or I'm sorry, five inches. Um, he I wouldn't be able to with the withdraw. Yeah, he wouldn't just wouldn't be able to do the withdraw. Is the only thing being engaged on two fronts in my, my personal opinion i don't i don't think that an individual should be able to lock you in like that i know that they can as it's written right mighty, now though. but i think mighty individuals even, yeah. even so you, i don't know i feel like if you've got like some yielding little big git or something then i could see it not being cool but i feel like a mighty individual should because it blocks up so many other things it Is blocks you from sick? going through it but Backing away from it shouldn't it shouldn't have the I guess more be six six wounds on the Pegasus and a ten roll for nerve. She did. Six, six wounds. She yeah. did because they combo He turn. he had Strider because he yep. ran the Overmaster over. Yeah, so that was Nine that was pretty bubble. hot. That was pretty yeah, hot six, roll. Six wounds on eight hits. Yeah. Yeah. Hoot. But now what do you do with them? Do you turn? I, I, I guess you turn in the face towards the water elementals at the flank of the men-at-arms that are holding that one token in the middle. Yep. Yeah, yeah and this is why I would have liked those water elementals sealing off that side of the board. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> as long as you kill the rockets, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, so I Devlin really should have turned that, that men-at-arms unit holding two tokens to the left and moved that way instead of moving forward with them. Yeah, turn. I would have gone more for going to the left. You ha still have quite a few turns to get across the board. Is if you get to the left, get out of some line of sights, and then you can move up behind that house and just kind of hide over there. Because yeah. you weren't getting within twelve, so. Yep. Um, so we've moved over to the multi charge against the Redemption Knights all the way over here on the right, and that's going to be the flank charge. One wound. Only doing one wound in the flank. And now the Black Souls in the front. And these are elite. Mm -hmm. so there's his elite rerolls. Picks up two more. 16 hits. Seven wounds. Puts him up to eight. Uh, puts him up to 11 because they had three from the last breath. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. The breath, I think. Yep. The thing is the stuff. So we need to six twice to kill these guys. Yep. There's a five. Five. And they're headstrong. They do have headstrong, yeah. yeah. Their headstrong so roll is huge. Big headstrong roll for next turn, yep. Also, their um, regeneration roll, if they get a, a good one, could potentially just mitigate the damage they took here. Speaking of regen rolls, did Mark ever roll regen for his overmaster on no when half read? I don't believe he did. Oh, it's regen. It says it's got five up regen. But I mean, does he? It's a half read. Yeah, he should have rolled unless he gets there when he does the combat. Maybe he'll remember over there. There's no combat. It's wavered. Oh right, yeah, no, he's not yeah. doing it. Yeah. I think he's just forgotten. Shh. Ooh, two wounds from. Onto the elementals. Yep, the from the uh, so that's 11 twice. 
Uh, 12 twice. They are dash 18 now. Oh, yeah, I was saying dash 17. Yeah, 12 twice. That's a six rolled, so definitely not doing anything to them. Now, moving on to the uh, Black Souls counter charging the Beast of Nature on the hill. Ouch. Six wins? Yep. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. Six wins. Oh, so someone clarified in the chat, enemy yielding units cannot be taken into account when determining if a, a unit can make a withdraw move, so only the mighty ones would. I Correct. Think. And the uh, the knight is mighty. He is. Yeah. Looks like a waiver onto the beast. Yep, that was a nine rolled. That's really big. Yeah, it is. That's really big. That's really the big. elementals can't get in there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the Earth Elementals really had no line based off of where everything ended up. They could essentially only move directly forward because they, they would just not be able to pivot until they hit. So I think that kind of the uh, Devlin's positioning after last round of combat really kind of pigeonholed him into what he could do this next turn. Ah, now they're doing regen. They no, forgot. Regen. Okay. Five and wounds. Takes, takes off five wounds, brings it back down to eight. It's that decent. was so crappy to realize it later. You know. Yeah. Oh, I had regen. I wouldn't have had all those wounds. I'm sure they remembered once uh, Devlin said, oh, I got regen on my knights. Right. It's like, wait, regen? I have that. I've got I that on that something. Hold on. I can't. I can't stand regen. Just as an aside. No. Because your enemies bring regen. I can't stand regen, it. And then it just breaks your heart. Well, just from from a design perspective, it's a rule that like the only actual counterplay to it is fire oil, which is not great, and it gets right. better the more damage the unit has on it. It it. I don't like it at all. If it's like regen four plus, then it hurts my feelings. Okay. Ashley, your mic is up. Right, sorry, I was drinking coffee. <laughs> I was like trying not to. Apparently, I drink really loud, so I didn't want to make you listen to that. <laughs> so now the Redeemer decides it's time to kill this uh, rocket. Yep. And there go the water elementals to pick up the tokens because he's, he's got to. Right. What's the range like for that? Um... The Ooh. rich slave unit that's behind the one damage uh, men at arms. Do they have range to the uh, to, sorry the one behind them or in front mm -hmm. of them? I guess over here. Yes. Yeah. So can't reach the water elementals. Can't reach the druid, right? But if he doesn't no. kill the um, the men at arms that have the token and the two wounds, if they don't kill that one in front of him, do they have the withdrawal to then go charge the water elementals? Uh, I don't think they have the the um they they wouldn't have the angle they the could, angle they would yeah, have to turn I mean. almost ninety degrees. Declare. Yeah, then they. Uh, yep. But Devlin did just move the druid into charge range of those slaves. That is unfortunate. I don't know why he did that. Because it's not like he's getting the other one in, inspiring anyways. Yeah. Why not right, tuck them between the two units and then you're not? Yeah. Well, and, and so the problem there is if they charge and happen to get rid of the druid. Uh, and get a good enough overrun roll, then they would be into the flank of the water elementals. Well, Which could be a combat post rocket shots. Um, but, right. But presumably the knights are going to be able to turn around and face all of that and be able to clean stuff up, but it still just Hopefully. wasn't necessary. I don't know what the druid is doing that it needs to be there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think he wants to provide inspiring. Mm -hmm. yeah, but but did he, he even get to. Position. Did he even get to inspiring range of the one damage men at arms? He didn't. I don't think. Unless he's very inspiring and I'm forgetting something. Uh, no. So I think that was that was the headstrong roll for the Redemption Knights all the way over there on the right. They got a five, so they could be headstrong. Let's see how the how the re region roll goes for them. Yeah. yeah. And so which unit do you hit here? Do you 
hit the black souls? Do you hit the? I think it I depends guess. on your regen roll. If it's that bad, like what he just rolled. Oof! Only one. Ugh. Um, I kind of think you want to take out the slaves, just because you know you have a a decent shot of killing them. The slaves to the in their flank, or the slaves in front of them that are fighting the earth elementals. Uh, in their flank. Because, again, I don't think you're winning this flank. Um, you're just more or less delaying. Right. Right. You're, you're ensuring okay. that nothing on that flank is ever going to make it to the middle. Yeah. There yeah. we go. So he's taking the Beast of Nature into the, uh, the rocket. Yeah, that's not a bad play. Definitely not. So yeah, now... Because it's not like that one Beast of Nature was really going to do much more to those Black Souls by itself. Right. All right, top of turn four, moving into the bottom half of the game. Apparently Devlin is holding three tokens. Mark still has just his two. I don't think any units have made it all the way across the board yet, but they're all pretty close to the line. Mm -hmm. Some big things coming up this turn. We'll be looking to see if those knights can finish off uh, the, the flying overmaster finally and turn to get back into the fight. Um, we'll be looking to see if two out of three guns go down to combat. Because uh, really, by this point in the game, given given the list that Devlin had, all three of those guns ought to be dead. Uh, yeah. Uh, and at looks the like, very least, they shouldn't have been shooting last turn. Yeah. So it looks like maybe Devlin is sending the knights into the Black Souls and is bane chanting them. Uh, that's what it appears. Just hoping for some wounds on it, I guess. I guess, or he's just not that worried about slaves in the flank, and he's worried that if he doesn't break them, that he showed his flank to Black Souls. Yes. He's going for Bane Chant there, so he's going to try and one-shot these slaves to be able to turn. Yep. I would almost rather see the Bane Chant on the Knights just to guarantee that kill onto the uh, Winged Overmaster. Yeah. He does still have eight wounds on the Overmaster, and he is 17, 19. Um, but those Knights are fresh because they didn't get countercharged last turn. Yep. Um, that, is you... that is a really good hit. A by... Terrible damage roll. Ooh. Yeah, that hurts. How much was that? Six? Six, yep. So he puts um up to 14. 14. So we need to five, five twice. And that's a 10. There's a 10. It's five twice. And another 10. There he when, goes. When you roll rocks for nerve, it doesn't matter. Yep. Who cares what damage you do if you just always roll 12? It'll be fine. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this time it was 10, but still. And I'm going to see just a straight, straight 180 reform here. Keep blocking off line of sight to those water elementals, but give them some support as well. Because I think some things are going to be coming for you. Yeah, that's probably fine, because then the Redeemer can come kill the other gun next turn. You don't really have to let, you don't really have to leave the knights in a position. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's a good, good positioning. I think those, so that's Order of Redemption with Strider boots? No. Which those are the ones with Strider. Uh, these are just the oh, these are just the regular Brotherhood knights, but they have the Pathfinder bed. Correct. Right. Okay. Are the water elementals within twelve of the three inch one or no? No, not quite. Okay. They just blocked line of sight, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, looks like that line of sight's blocked. 
so that's just missing the corner and it's going across the knight. So yeah. Uh, so this is the Redeemer Knight on uh, this middle gun with one wound. Looks like he's put eight more wounds on it and a six will definitely take Do up it. the gun. Should have been dead a while ago. Let's be realistic. Yeah. Should have been dead a long time ago. Should probably not have probably one wound. second turn. Yeah. Yeah, yes. when he did yeah. one wound when he should have when he did one wound the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Bad face for him. More than got the value out of that for Mark. Absolutely. Is he overrunning? No. Okay. Okay. Just in case he wants to see something around the forest next turn instead of killing that other gun, but he should really kill that other gun. I mean, he can always spin yeah. around and go anyways. I think he's just giving himself a few more options. Right. Unless, Because, I mean, really, the gun on the, the right side... He just, like Only one. three hits. Only three hits from the minute arms on the uh, slave in the middle there where he bank chanted. And was hoping to put a lot of wounds on. Two wounds. Two wounds. <sighs> Two wounds and a seven. That's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Over. Next combat over. This one's already got six wounds. Gets five hits. Oh, wow. Ooh. One wound. One wound. Jeez. Yeah, he really, really needs to pick this up this turn. And he's not going to do it. Yeah. That doesn't help. The dice aren't helping either. Yeah, no, not at all. Twelve on fours and what fours? Fours and fours. We do more than one. Uh, but it looks like at least he did wait for them. Um, that's. I mean, that's a thing. It's a thing, yeah. but he's got these these other I'm like, two. It doesn't change a ton for. <sighs> it doesn't change a rear charge. So. A rear no, charge from exactly. the back one. He needed them so to Mark, die. Mark will probably put this one into the flank of the one carrying the token and this one into the rear of the other one, I would guess. Yep. And then if they take the one that's carrying the token, it's like your water elementals don't really can't really come take it. It's gonna be kind of a bite. Yeah, we're gonna I that's don't know anymore. I'm just on the black crazy souls. person. But he does have knights turned to face over here, so and this uh Beast of Nature can potentially threaten towards the middle as well after it kills a uh, it kills rocket. Yep. Yeah. You know, hopefully it kills a rocket. You yep. So know. only six wounds from the uh, Redeemer Knights uh, into the Black Souls all the way over there on the right. And that's not going to be enough to take them. Now on to the Earth Elementals, who have a pretty good shot at killing these guys with six wounds. What is uh, this? Seven more wounds, I think. That should do it. That should do it. So now we'll see if we'll see how badly the Earth Elementals blow up. Four. You're seeing two, so looking for fours on the roll. Right. One. one. Just one. Yeah, not not something that they are too worried about. No, no. I'm not gonna be stressed no. about that. But now, but what do you do with them? But it stacks up over time. I think he's taken three or four wounds from the uh, explosions that hasn't been healed off. So yeah. could he sidestep like to uh, to the towards the bottom so that he'd be able to clear his unit and flank charge the black souls next turn? Because he has the I, I think. I think he's already touching the uh, the I mean, nature here. He really doesn't oh. have to do much with them. Yeah, because he has surge over there. No, yeah. that's true. I mean, I, ideally, you don't have to surge, and you just are able to heal one or two off of them. But mm -hmm. you can kind of do whatever he wants with them, really. Yeah, like like really, all all he wants to do is charge them up on the hill next turn and get in the way of the black souls with the tokens. I'm taking the tokens uh, anyway. Uh, that's not Bob before. He forgot to uh, kill the gun. We're like, give us our dice rolls. <laughs> <laughs> you may not have questions, but you <laughs> must roll your dice, please. Yeah. 
see how long it takes them to realize they should do that last combat. Possibly when we get to the shooting phase. Possibly. All right. So Devlin definitely racked up some kill points. That last turn. Update that now. Are they still not realized? They didn't read the comment. I think yeah. they just undid everything. Oh, okay. So, Was that hopefully. what they were doing it for? Hopefully yeah. that's why they undid everything. Yeah. So kill points wise, that was a big swing turn. It brought it to put put Devlin back in the lead. Not that kill points really matter for this scenario, mm -hmm. um, but people seem to like to know. Well, I mean, scenario doesn't matter if your opponent's dead. That's true, but in this case, that's that's clearly not not, not what's happened during the bottom of turn four. The they've they've collectively killed nine hundred points. What about a thousand points, maybe? Yeah, yeah. between uh, out of. 4,600? <laughs> a lot of waivers. A lot, a lot of waivers. Waiver waivers. Yeah. Across the board. A lot, a lot of waivers. Um, I guess they're not doing that combat. Yeah. I'm so... Give me my dice rolls! <laughs> <laughs> when they get to shooting, they'll they'll probably realize it. And it's like, I got one gun to shoot. Oh, wait a minute, like, Wait a minute, no I don't. I mean, it's... It just might change Devlin's, like, it's kind of unfair, too, because, like, depending on what Mark moves, right? and and then Devlin kills it, he has a much better there where to position. There we go. <laughs> uh, threes with Vicious now. Yep. Mm. That should do, was that 12 hits? At least the nature hit on fours or threes? They hit on threes. Pathfinder? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. 15 hits? That's 12 wounds. 12 possibly wounds. 13. That's just snakes. Oh. Yeah, still snakes. Just one uh, time. Not snakes. There we go. That's yeah. really big. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Because now he's right behind the line staring at everybody's butts. If you now, want do to. Do you use that beast of nature to help out on the right flank, which, you know, isn't necessarily where the game's going to be decided or do you do you push it to try to deal with some of these regiments that are rushing over to the left um i think the correct answer is towards the center and towards the left mm -hmm. um but it's, it's really tempting to just face up the rear of the black souls though right and i think you can position it in a way if you're looking directly to the top board edge you can still have line of sight or front arc on a, several different options mm -hmm. um, but i think you have to threaten these slaves in the middle which he may be doing that with the positioning he has here what's the range on that um, uh, beast of nature where it's at as well, it, it can reach both of those regiments, but they're not going to be there anymore. Right. Which way did he face it? He's facing up the field towards the Black back. Souls. Okay. Now, now, actually, if he gets into the back of the Black Souls that are fighting that beast of nature, he could just take <laughs> he could take both of their tokens and then just back up, and the other Black Souls wouldn't be able to see them. Oh, that'd be so funny. Yeah, because he'd have to land over here on the right of them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's really... That's, that's, a, that's the higher... Payoff play. I guess it's not even that risky. So well, yeah, I mean you. Way to go you for a big win. Yeah, I mean you. You do that. You assume that your beast of nature that's currently in combat is going to be killed. So you try to get your earth elementals into the front of those black souls and walk forward, um, so that the the back end of black souls is staring at a unit of earth elementals that they can't pivot through to get the the beast. If Mark sees that, I think he would want to sidestep this unit of Black Souls, but... I don't think he could sidestep it far enough, though. Yeah, they're only speed four. Yeah, yeah. you want to go two inches. Put them over here. He sidestep that one right, sidestep the one in front left that has the tokens, yeah. and just hope that he gets some damage from the flanking tunnel slaves. Or didn't he yeah. counter-charge the front of the Beast of Nature anyways? 
So he'd have Possibly, to not exactly. countercharge. I don't know. I don't. Because yeah. he shuffled think, over a little to do the charge. I think. I think yeah. backing up the back unit of Black Souls would be the play just so that way you force him to go that no. much further back yeah, you, yeah and yeah and if he backs up far enough you'll be right in front of you when he charges yeah. oh. or give him more space and he wouldn't even have to back up unless right. he's facing the well he's overlapping right now so i don't know yeah. what he's looking for yeah. but... well, he's turning all the way around to face the beast Oh, my goodness. oh, I like oh, that. No. Seems like a <laughs> Ashley, you started to say, "Oh, I like," <laughs> and you're like, "Oh yeah, I uh, I love both of these players." Uh, I am um, I'm emotionally invested in both of the outcomes that could happen in this game. Okay. I swear, I'm not biased at all. I think I think uh, Mark just uh, reconsidered that and realized yep. that it was not not going to be a good move for him. Yeah. Like you feel as it flies right over. You guys are gonna make me such good play. Like doing all these commentaries, I feel like I'm gonna be a much better player after this because I watch all this analysis and all these great <laughs> opinions. And then you just have to apply it in the moment. Yeah, and then not have analysis paralysis on the table. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've we've started brainstorming uh, what we might do with Dash Twenty at Live after Call to Arms is over. Like, because who knows how long everybody being locked down and tournaments being canceled is going to go. And if people still need entertainment, we should try to figure out something else to put up here. And we started throwing out, the, you know, lots of uh, lots of ideas. And uh, one that might be fun is to, like, have a bunch of matches where people that have done commentary have to come in here and play. And we invite some of the people who played uh, but didn't get a chance to do commentary to comment on that. Just kind of turn the tables on everybody. <laughs> that might be fun for a few exhibition matches. Definitely. That'd be fun. I like how I said I couldn't play in Call to Arms because I figured I'd be too busy with work, and then I just did, like, three commentary in one weekend, so... Yeah, I did the same. I was like, oh, this... Yeah, I don't have anything better to do, so let's do it. Yeah, I'm like, I have days off. <laughs> can't go um, anywhere, can't do anything, might as well. Right. Yeah, there's nothing else I can do. Uh, one thing, uh, if I can throw out an idea there for you, Mike, maybe do like a, a bracket style play. Um, you know, maybe pick eight people or something, mm -hmm. 16 people, and just do, do single elimination. Yep, single elimination bracket. And yeah, we thought about that. That would be fun. Yeah, we we thought about like if, if we could get like uh, people who have like won the Masters or like Clash of Kings in their respective countries or people that have, that have come top in like big events like that and just do a little, little like uber elite invitational single elimination bracket. That might be cool. Yeah, definitely. So we did take the charge onto this druid, um, which yeah, I think, nice. I think dice uh, numbers wise, he's not going to break the druid. Um, and that might've been part of Devlin's thinking, but it does prevent Devlin from healing or uh, well, he's not going to surge. Yeah. He's not going to surge since he has those tokens. So, yeah, and he does still have a flank charge onto the men at arms with one token with the other unit of slaves, or a rear, or a rear charge, charge, I think, or rear charge on on these guys. Yeah, I think uh, you take the flank on the guy carrying the token, though. No. Yeah, I think so. Brisket yeah. to get the biscuit. I mean, especially yeah, because, positionally, because yeah. then he just turns the one damage wretches to face the knights. He's got a wall screening off the unit with the one token. Exactly. And then looking at the next turn, does Devlin even worry about this rocket going forward? He's going to have everything within 12 inches here shortly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if the water elementals push up anymore, then he doesn't have to worry about it at all. Yeah. Yep. Let the water elementals kill him in two turns. Yeah. And then now the problem, though, I suppose they're probably within 15 at this point. But they are down to speed five, can't at the right. double, and can't be surged. And looking at that no, yeah. measure, tape measure they have conveniently placed there, it does look like about 15 inches away. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, it looks like they're currently 13 inches from the front. So if they move forward more than an inch at all, 
Yeah, so it looks like he has chosen to take the rear charge on the men at arms with one wound instead of the one with two wounds in the token. Yeah, that was that was a mistake in my opinion. Even if so. the, even if the one wound um, wretch unit could kill those men at arms, now they're stuck holding the token in front of the knights. See, and I, I like that. Um, if you take the character into the flank as well, which he is not doing, it looks like no. Because if you can, coverage. if you can kill that unit, you're forcing, uh, in my opinion, you're forcing the uh, redeemer to go into the seven wound unit, and then it's going to be a kind of an attrition of units after this. I don't think he. I, I think Devlin has the upper hand either way, but yeah, yes, definitely. So, because assuming both of the men at arms die probably three of those wretch units could just die in the next turn from Devlin's charge. And the, it's one wretch and the overmaster against knights, redeemer, and water elementals. Mm -hmm. The water elementals... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, uh, I was just going to reply to Bart's comment that I think I think we had put out the notion of like a club challenge of like get some of the big clubs from around the world to bring their two or three top players. I'd be interested in that. Yeah. I'm not very happy in my club. I'm not playing in any of these. <laughs> I can be the token girl on the cast. It's fine. Yeah. What did you uh, What did you want to know about the water elementals? Um, they're in the flank of the one unit rich regiment right now. Of the one wound rich regiment. Uh, yeah. yeah, that one there. Yeah. Yes. Look to be. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a great charge. Take that and then put the knights into the uh, topmost rich yeah that one there yep. and, then, and, then, and then the redeemer clean up the seven the seven damage one and you're and then you've got your water water elementals completely on his half of the board too and then no mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. probably should and you'll still be within 12 inches of the gun so it can't shoot you yep. okay let me just telepathically tell Devin. Devin. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that handles both those units and then you can easily send the redeemer into the one with seven wounds to finish it off So Brindley says, how does the text, I mean, the U.S. is science top three players. <laughs> well, Brindley, we look at the results from the most recent U.S. Masters. Mm -hmm. mm. That would be, uh, gosh, two Midwest and a mountain region player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was so, Travis came in third? Yep, Travis came in third. Yep. I don't think anybody wants to play against that goblin army. So, oh, it wasn't so bad. No, did you play it? Yeah, I played at Masters year before last, and he didn't kill anything with shooting until turn five. Oh yeah, you were the one that got all the good luck. <laughs> yes, oh. it was ridiculous. I think I broke a horde of chariots with Bazuzu oh. and a unit of gargoyles in one shot. All right, never Contact. happens. All right, on to combat. Starting on the individual. <laughs> Billy, we're going to make you the judge for that. Uh, you just tell us how you want to do it. And we are on to combat. Uh, so this is on the Drew, it looks like, and he snaked it. No? It just didn't do any damage to him. Hit twice and once for damage. Oh, yeah. That druid is not... Huh. Okay, we all just got way too quiet there, guys. <laughs> yeah, hey, sorry, back. I think I think we just had a little, little bandwidth hiccup. I think we lost... Uh, I wasn't sure if we all just uh, got really quiet or like... Yeah. Well, that's kind of good for the druid. Like, it's the druid, right? So he can still cast if he wants to. He took no damage. Yep. yep. Sorry. Keep losing connection for some reason. It's okay. That looks like we moved on to the combat the, uh, with the rear charge in the middle. They did four damage to the... A 10, that's a 15. Is that a waiver? A... Uh, no, that's an 8 rolled, so okay. that's a 13. So they're fine. Wavered, yeah. yeah. 13's a waiver, yeah. But that's fine, because that means both of the units are going to stay there facing. Yeah, yeah. Facing them for another turn. And they are... Are they headstrong? 
I may have imagined that. Uh, they are. Yes, they are. Okay, so potentially still actually doing stuff. Potentially still actually doing stuff. I love him. Yeah, so I guess at that point, like, you might send the Redeemer into the one with seven wounds and countercharge the one to the rear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, over here to the flank charge on the knight. All the way over here on the right, where he did a fresh charge so he could get a flank. With black souls. And there's the black souls to hit roll. Was that 34 hits? And 10 elite rerolls. Oh my. Converting eight of them. Jesus. Ugh. But they had, they had 10 damage on them already. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was like. They were kind of already a little fucked. <laughs> That's going to be another seven, 17 wounds. Yeah. Well put. Yeah. yeah. So not snakes. Twice. Really all he needs there. There's once and twice. Twice. So that'll take the knights up off the board on the right side. I am so shocked that this has happened. <laughs> didn't help that his, what was his regen, like one? Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't help anything either. So I, I guess I wasn't paying attention. So he did move those black souls on the bottom there so that he doesn't have room for a rear charge on the ones carrying the tokens. Is that correct? I think, I he, think he still tokens. has room. He still has room, but moving them over that little bit um, tightens up that tightens up that arc more. So the beast would need probably a three instead of just like a one to get out of the back black souls arc after, after the fight. Mm, yeah. Assuming they even kill it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah, I guess that's true. Um those are the which which ones are those? Oh, those are the hammer of measured force black souls, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so they are still defense. Right. They're defense now, five. No, they're defense five. five. They're defense five. But he could still get a bane chant over there from the looks of it. Mm -hmm. Uh with that druid. So that that would be a good attempt. Um but we're gonna go into the top of five, so Mark's still going to have two turns to answer it. Yep. Um, but I think it's still a, a good play because if he answers it and picks up the tokens, he'll have the tokens turn six, but he's still on his side of the board. Yeah. And I think that's what we've talked about this whole time is like Devlin's whole play here is just, he's probably going to get the tokens on the right, but just keep Mark on his side of the board with the tokens. There's a strong role in that beast of nature. That guy's probably gone. Yeah, so that's eight eight wounds on top of the ten it already has, and a six, and I don't think it is inspired. Nope. It did. So it now, did. how do you reform these? I guess you could, you no. Know, sidestepping to the left doesn't seem good. Nope, sidestepping to the left is bad, and you can't really sidestep the. Uh, slaves away to give you space because the earth elementals are right there. Um, yeah, so you're kind of in a rough spot. Could you try backing up the slaves and then you might give yourself a little more room to pivot? It also or... gives earth elementals more room though in that case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's right. why I'm bad at yeah. this. Yeah, you're trying not to get that, that unit pinched between the beast and the, or... and the elementals. Do you just run forward with the slaves and give the earth elementals as little maneuvering as possible? Because I don't know if they can clear left or right to go into either of the hordes. I think if he overruns forward, though, a sidestep down with the Earth Elementals and then a surge will still get him into the Black Souls. Yeah. So you're forcing the surge then at mm -hmm. that point. And it might not be possible with the board edge right there as well, though. Right. It's tough to say from this angle. Yeah. Two and a half inches, though. That's not a whole lot of room. I feel like there's also this problem where, like, I want to be able to just, like, take tape measures and measure things and look at more on the board, but then we give everything away. So, <laughs> not allowed. No touchy. Now, can these black souls reform to where this um, beast would be in a flank instead of a rear? So I think they can wheel. Um, pivot. Pivot. Sorry. <laughs> I think they can pivot their front right corner forward if they do that. 
but they might not be able to with the slaves there. Yeah, I don't know if he can go far enough without clipping his back unit and his and land or landing on top of the slaves. So Devlin is choosing to take out this last rocket. Oh, and I didn't see, did the uh, druid take a single wound from those no, slaves? No, he didn't. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, they rolled uh, two ones for wounds. They got two hits and rolled one through wound. Um, I mean, I guess I can see some merit in taking out that last that last war engine just to say that there's nothing else um, to do cleanup at the mm -hmm. end of the game. There's some merit to that, I think. It's true. Um, yeah, I don't think it was necessary, but I, I think it's not a bad play. Um, because realistically, you're looking at the only other option that Redeemer could do was go into the seven wound slaves. Yeah. Which now, if he gets his headstrong roll, he can probably just. Yeah, I would have liked to see his headstrong roll before making that decision. Yeah. Is the druid going to try to punch the rich slave unit? I don't think he's moved it yet. No, he was just moving the water elementals, so. So after this on turn six, are we just going to watch the water elemental side shuffle? Just <laughs> <laughs> do a little shuffle. Yeah. Here comes the headstrong roll. And oh. gets a one. Okay. It's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. No. It's like a little sad, but it's okay. Just gotta be careful oh. he doesn't get um, those four wound men at arms flanked by that back wretch unit after they um... after they clean up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. think there's going to be a way he can not oh. give him a flank. Actually, that back unit's not going to get to withdraw because Devlin's not charging him since he's wavered. So they're going to be stuck locked there. He can't make a ninety degree pivot. Are they still technically engaged though? Regardless, he's not going to be able to back up, and he's wider than he is deep, so he wouldn't be able to turn 90 without overlapping the minute arms. I think they are just out of arc. Yeah. So, uh, just so I better understand, why why wouldn't he be able to do a withdraw? Because this player is not engaged. It's, I thought it was post-combat, right? Uh, a withdraw is the beginning of your movement phase. Right, but I thought okay. you'd do a withdrawal after having been in combat with the unit previously. Are they? I think it's when you are engaged, and currently, since that unit is wavered, they they aren't able to countercharge or charge any of these units. Are they so they're be engaged. So all three of these units are engaged with each other. So we disengage when you're waving? My understanding. I thought you could just say I'm disengaged, can't you? But I guess you'd have to. Would you have but, to do it all? Um, you, yeah. it, in order to dis, in order to disengage, you'd have to move at least. Uh, you have to end your movement an inch away from the unit, unless you're countercharging or performing something that allows you to come within an inch. Is my understanding. I don't think you're allowed to remain engaged if you're not countercharging, right? That's 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 more of my question. Would they be considered engaged if there's no combat that took place and if one of the units was wavered? If someone else knows in the comments, you can go ahead and type it up. Yeah, tell us that we're wrong. Tell us we're wrong or we're right. Whatever you want to do. Oh, that beast was in the flank of those black souls? Oh, boy. Really? That. Can you, draw, can you give us the black souls yeah, arc? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It doesn't yeah. I guess that's I don't know where he was in relation to the token. I think he probably could have pivoted because wasn't the gun basically here? He might have been able to pivot around enough to put his leader point just in the rear, or maybe not. Yeah. I don't know if the flank is better, though, for him. Because then maybe he could just back straight up and be out of... But then there's that other Black Soul unit facing down. I don't know if he can get right. out of... Right. Yeah, I yeah. Think that's, that's definitely worse. Devlin might just be trying to you know, go for a Hail Mary here, because I don't oh, think a flank kills. 
The brewer did charge. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, as, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And as we've learned, you can't just kill a unit and then not pick up the tokens. You can't leave them sitting there, so they do have to. Uh, this is going to be a Bane Chant, probably, cast from the Druid on the right side onto the Charging Beast of Nature, or a Heal. Okay. Probably Bane Chant, yeah. Yeah, it's Bane Chant. It goes off. And gets it. It is Vicious, right? It is, yeah. 14 yeah. on 3s and 2s with Vicious. Still not great odds to kill. But it's I think if... a waiver might actually be a better option in this situation. You're waiver, just... yeah, waiver would be would be really really useful. Yeah, because you have to drop the token. So even if he wants, yeah, there's nowhere for his tokens to go. Because even if he All wants right. to drop them, he has to put them under his footprint, and he won't be able to get out of the way. I don't think for another unit to get them. Yeah. All right, here comes the druid fight. Druid, druid. <laughs> One attack in on fives. I don't care who had the yeah, druid. Nope. Yeah. Uh, he did his it. bestest. I love silly individual fights. They make me happy. <laughs> All right, so we got the war machine. 15 hits. hits. He's finally hitting on threes. <laughs> so proud. And 11 wounds. Yep. Puts, puts that uh, last remaining rocket on snakes. Just once, I think. Yeah. Got it. Good to be. All right, now I'm hoping for a sidestep to try to get into the woods, open up his line of sight a little more. Yes. Yeah. Three. More back up. Okay. Back up opens it up a little bit to some over here. Yeah, I think that he can see around the forest enough. That should be fine. Yeah, but he can't see the unit that the druid's currently in combat with, which might be the one sure. that he wants. Because I'm pretty sure they can just charge right through the druid next turn, right? Right, but they'll be in the forest if they charge the uh, yeah. water elementals. Yeah, and it's, yeah, and that'd be a hindered front charge from slaves. So, Unless he gets the strider order in there. That's true. Uh, because yeah, the right. nine-inch questionable strider <laughs> nine order... Inch order. The questionable strider order that is nine yeah. inches. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that, these are the these are the knights in the flank. That looks like some dead slaves to me. That's going to be some dead slaves. They are inspired uh, by the Overmaster, but it'll be snakes twice, and there it is. Uh, but now he has destroyed a slave unit with two units, so I guess he gets to blow up both of them. Yep, it looks to be... Yeah, I feel like maybe you wouldn't have needed to do the charge in the front, like disengage and then just let your knights, so only one unit's taking the blow up. I don't know if the you really or needed to take the damage. Or maybe that's what he did. We'll find out. No, he's taking the damage on the men at arms first. So. Yeah. I don't know if he had the option to disengage there. Just because my understanding of a disengage, you have to end. Uh, at least an inch away, unless you're completing another action that allows you to be within an inch, like a charge. Hmm. I don't know. I gotta read the rules again. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe Pat can check for us. Looks like in the chat he's looking up stuff regarding our yeah. previous conversation. So it looks like you can, wavered units can engage, and you can withdraw while engaged whether or not you fought. So yeah, so they should be able to take that one inch back for the wretch unit that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only reason I see bringing those men at arms in is so that they can get a post-combat move, but it just doesn't seem like it was worth it. Yeah. Because no, there was nothing really, there wasn't much they could see him. At... Anyways, but... Uh, so only one wound on the knights, though. That's good for him. Um, yeah. I just need to figure out how he wants to... Uh, that. Thank you, Pat. So, Pat also clarified, uh, to disengage, you have to end one inch away unless it's a charge. You also can't disengage if engaged on multiple flanks unless one of those units is yielding. Oh, okay, so yeah, so a yielding individual can't actually block you. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I think yeah. we talked about that earlier in the chat too. Um, so I guess the men at arms wouldn't have oh been able to back up. God, D3s. He accidentally rolled D3. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. He's still rolling D3s? Is he... He's still rolling D3s. Can we... He's been rolling them since the uh, since the explosion. Yes. No, those are D three. <laughs> no. Yeah, I think this is something we should uh, clarify. On. Yeah, those are D three sweets. <laughs> when it's you know when it's like rules issues or things like that, but when it's things like you guys forgot a combat or <laughs> <laughs> you know if those were D sixes. The hashtag UV dice banner could come up, but uh... yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting upset, right? I would. I think I would, I would too. We so <laughs> upset. I mean, a four nerve on two D threes is pretty good, actually. So yeah, <laughs> I think I can hear Brindley giggling in the living room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Yeah, I've done it before as well. I think I think every army that has anything that rolls D three is every every player that plays it has done that at least at least once. That's why I, I still don't change to D threes uh-uh. in you yeah. universal battle. So yeah, no, I, I stopped doing like like the third time I like shot with my catapults, rolled D threes, and then went on to like drain life, and was still set to D threes, and was like Morgoth, why do you suck? <laughs> oh wait. D3. So did he just decide not to do that combat right now? He's going to do another one first? No, so he was rolling D3s to wound over here for the last breath. So they went back and corrected that. Mm, That makes sense, yeah, okay. So now he did four wounds on the knights instead of just the one. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And here comes the beast. Uh, So it's going to be eight hits. A little bit better. A little bit better. Uh, Should be wounding on three. Should be wounding on twos, right? Yeah, Yeah, he did eight So eight Eight damage. And that's still pretty bad on 14 dice. Yeah. And then he rolled a 7 for nerve? No, that's no that was uh, no, that vicious. vicious. Oh, vicious, sorry. That's one so twelve. He's up to 14. Looking for a 9 one time? Promo. Because yep. he had nine Bane Chan. Yeah. Right, 9 wants to break 7 to waver? Oh, yeah, or, or that 7 waver, yeah. There it is. Yeah, I think the waiver is the better option because the Black Souls uh, behind the hill here uh, on the bottom side of the board aren't mm-hmm. going to be able to make the wheel to hit the beast. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then it protects your earth elementals to be able to turn and face the onslaught of this next unit. Yep. Mm-hmm. I agree. Which I guess where the Earth Elementals are currently positioned, they probably are in the front of both units. So what do you do with the Earth Elementals, um, assuming that the Black Souls end up wavered? I think that if they clear that wretch unit, they push forward, just straight forward, to protect the um, the beast of nature. Well, he didn't waver. Yep. That's a five. Tough break there. Yep. So now I think his only play is to um, back up the Earth Elementals, assuming that he kills these slaves. Look, he's ready to roll. There we go. Uh, 13 hits on 18 dice on fours. Pretty good. It's a little over average. And then he wants that seven wounds. They're only pressing yeah. one, right? Yeah, they are. Seven ones is... Defense four seven. slaves are a thing. Yeah. I was surprised. But that's a good nerve test, and with Brutal, those are definitely dead. Yeah, yeah. there's no inspiring here, so... That's going to be... One more down. So that's if you just... Explosions. Yeah. There we go. Three. Stop changing to D3s. I feel like this is going to go... <laughs> Uh, oh, he got it's it. all three wounds. Okay. That hurts. That brings yeah, him up to ten wounds. Yeah. They're easily within kill range. Yep. So do you stay there or back up to try and keep everything in your front so they won't have the option as many options? Or what do you do? Smart boys, tell me what we do. I think that at this point your beast of nature would actually be the thing to protect because your earth elementals are done for. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they well, did. 
So I would have walked forward. Yeah, and doing that, he's opened up the ability to uh, charge the front with the unit that's engaged with the beast of nature. Mm -hmm. And I think he might have the ability to wheel and hit with the unit that's behind. Pivot. At the very least, he can hit with the unit that's uh, up top. Up top. Yeah, they'll be able to wheel around and touch touch the back corner. Well, yeah, because isn't that one wavered? The one with the tokens? No. No. He did uh, not waver. We need a no. seven, he got a five. Oh, right, yeah, yeah he rolled. Okay. So it looks as if um, Devlin's, what I would say, backup plan of delay tactics on this flank is not going to pan out in his favor. So um, that's good for Mark. Now the uh, real battle begins for the middle. Yep. As push once again comes down to who it's the center token. Mm -hmm. And this is bottom five, is that correct? Bottom of five, yep. I don't think... Mark will have the opportunity to get any of these Black Soul hordes over towards the center, um, even if there's a potential turn seven. Let's see if that back wretch unit does take the disengage and kill those men at arms. Yep. I think that's the play. Oh. That's interesting. Yep, flank there. And flank there, but once that... No, no, actually, if he backs up the back Black Souls unit, he can still pivot them and get in. That's what he'll need to do. Well, he just needs to make contact, correct? So he could pivot just even a single degrees, make contact with the corner, and then pick up in place. Yeah, I was thinking he didn't have the space, but he's got the space, so he doesn't even have to worry about that much. Uh, snake eyes there would be really bad for Mark. Um, because his, his unit's still not over, so he doesn't even have four. Yeah, and that's the problem with sending the wretches in. Right? He's, he stopped himself from getting as far over as he could. Yeah. It's true. Unnecessary. Yeah, because you can also, um, you have to go completely over, right? So if he had been able to slide down farther, and then if he cleans up the combat and slides down, that's also yeah. a thing. And also, if he slid down, I think the uh, back unit could get into the Beast of Nature at that point. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, it might be. But I guess we'll never know. We'll never know. Yeah, I mean, it's got to get in the front. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. Back and forth. There's nowhere for it to go, man. What are you doing? Yeah, this unit has pretty much done nothing the whole game. Yep. So here we are, bottom of turn five. Uh, they are still within 200 points of attrition of one another. Um, so kill point wise, still very, very close game. Um, but Devlin does have three tokens to marks two. Um, and still has a decent amount of hitting power left in the center of the table that doesn't care about the terrain. Mike, can you give us the Overmaster on foot and his range? Yeah. Is he within eight inches of the knights? He is not. Mm -hmm. He's half an inch out. That would have been... Uh, that would have made this a little bit more interesting, I think. Because he could... He could do individual things and pivot around to charge the knights. Yeah, and he is mighty. Correct. And takes some thunders, probably. Maybe. Yeah, strips the thunders. Yep. Uh, so it looks like he is taking the counter charge on the men-at-arms with eight wounds in the center holding the token with those uh, slaves that were in the rear of the wavered men-at-arms. Mm -hmm. right. I want to see him bring that overmaster actually into this combat. Oh, he's trying to bring this wretch unit into what? Maybe into the men at arms as well? 
I don't think he can complete that where the knights are. Yeah, I don't see him getting there. If he could, I mean, that would be a strong move because then he has them in, in between the knights and yeah. the potential token carrier. But Correct. I feel like he's going to um, clip the knights first in that pivot. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't see it being possible. Absolutely. I just feel that would, like I, that would be a great position though, because because then he'd have these he'd have two slave units, and he could pick up the token with this back one and just back up and run away while you have to try to mop up these guys in front. Mike, can yeah, we zoom in a little bit on this just so we can see sure. the angles a little better while he's doing it? Thank you. Yeah. Just because I am blind. Back another degree yeah. or two. I think. I mean, I think he could achieve the same thing though if he just goes straight forward with them and puts the overmaster into the five wound unit. Slide Except for, he would not be able to do that. He has to remain an inch away since he's disengaging. So I don't think he could... No, no, no. I mean just combo charge this unit and the Overmaster into the five wound unit. Ah, understand. Which would yeah. Slide Slides the over a little bit. seven inches over a little bit, and then he can pivot yeah. and reform and still block the knights. He doesn't need to pivot and reform. He can just sidestep over towards them. I mean, they already have six or, wounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're going to kill him no matter what. That's yeah, that's even, even better. Just a sidestep post-combat. Yeah. Yeah, and I think at you. that point, the slave unit uh, that's currently engaged with the druid, I think they would have to probably stay where they are. Yeah. I know we talked about the option of running through and hitting the um, water elementals, but I don't think you're getting the water elementals. I think you have to play for the single token here. Yeah. Yeah, and at that point, the last turn is just playing keep away with that token. Right. But even if he gets that token, if he doesn't cross with the other ones... It's a draw if he doesn't cross draw. with the other ones, and he does with this one. Yeah. We'll see. Sorry. Okay, so he did decide to do the Overmaster and the okay. Slaves into the front. Oh, so he ran through the Druid? Yeah, it's yeah, not mighty. You can charge it. Right, right. I was just wondering if he... Yeah, he's going to go for the front. Um, and I don't, so three, six, so it's going to depend on whether or not they're giving them the nine inch, uh, aura with the horn as to whether those guys have strider or not. I think it's going to be really close either way. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling they'll have strider, <laughs> but I don't think that's going to be a really big issue. No. Because even then, they're still hitting on fives and what wounding on fives against the dash 17 fresh unit that's inspired. Yeah, right. And I don't even think I would want to counter charge there unless it's going to be somehow a flank there. Because if you counter charge, you're sliding yourself back on your side of the board, no? Yeah, that's what I was looking at too. Is I think it, it, it would be a flank if he chooses to just declare a charge from the yeah. positions he's from the position he's in right now, think, which is fine for you as a flank, but I wouldn't take a front there. No. Unless he does a yeah. critical amount of damage, because what's the point? You're going to just right. slide yourself back on your side of the board, I think. So, But yeah. you could combat reform, slide back down. It, it depends on where the 24-inch line is. Yeah. But I think if we look or compare, I don't think the center token has moved at all, um, even though that unit, I believe, has picked it up. We don't know for sure if they have, though. All right, so we're doing the flank there. Yep, only eight hits, four wounds, four puts him at 12. That's a three, mm -hmm. twice. Twice, one more. Yeah, yeah that'll do six. it. We'll pick up those men in arms. So the men in arms are gone and the slaves can pick up the token or has to take the token anyways, yeah. Now, what do you do for a reform here? Because I think right now, that unless you back up, I think the knights have a charge with most of what you do. Yeah. Back up, run away. Yeah, and just hope for a big enough run away. Well, no, you, no that's, that's not going to work. Well, hope that these slaves can sidestep enough to get in the knights' way after they polish off the men at arms in front of them. If they polish off the men at arms in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they have the Overmaster in there, so I think yeah, it's a much true. better chance now. Wait, and I how many don't... attacks is the Overmaster? I'm just like... Five. 
five. He's a oh, yeah. he's a pretty hitty character. Um, and I don't think these men at arms here are inspired by the druid. They are not. So it's very likely that he eliminates this unit. Uh, three hits from the slaves and no wounds. No wounds. Well, it's less Maybe likely not. now. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see what his overmaster does. It's all down to you, buddy. You've been standing around doing nothing all game. This is your moment to shine. You can do it, maybe. He hasn't do been it. doing nothing. He's been yelling at slaves, you get over that fence. Right. You go through those forests. Right. You get your Don't fat ass over the fence, okay? Come on. So Looks four like hits. Three wounds. Three wounds, yeah. He is rushing one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Three wounds, it puts him at eight. Not a gimme. But so there's seven. a seven. And that's that's all it takes is yep. a seven. Right on what he needs. So. I would have done that one first just to see what kind of blocking you could do on the knights. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, because that could have informed how you reformed the one that's now holding the token. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Knowing for certain. Oh, no, don't just turn. Um, I mean, maybe he's assuming that in bottom of six, if those knights go last breath overmaster and that unit could just kill the knights. That's very true. But yeah. I think those uh, slaves are going to get charged by an exemplar redeemer if the, yeah. if he's in range anyway. Mm -hmm. should be. Right, yeah, so setting them up to, to counter is yeah. not particularly useful. And I right. think if the knights kill those slaves carrying the token, they could overrun out of the arc of the slaves, I think. Maybe. maybe. They have to run pretty oh, far. Oh, no, maybe not. Yeah. They have to run really far. Yeah, maybe, but it's probably best to just turn to face. Like, say he goes in, takes out that token unit, turn to face so that the Overmaster would be on his side instead of his front. So on a seven, he could just walk over and score. Yeah. My God. He didn't even roll elite rolls because he had 29 hits. Yeah, he didn't bother. Oh, there's this elite. <laughs> No, oh, they only got two more. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. 13 wounds. Uh, and he has vicious rolls if he chooses to roll them. And had two wounds on it already. So he's yeah. at double ones anyways. Right. Where's, just where's, once. Just, yeah, because the inspiring's way back there. Too far. Uh. And that'll be a seven. Nah. Sorry, that was loud. <laughs> All right. We're cleaning up some, some points here. Uh, the Earth Elementals are inspired, but they already have 10 wounds on them, so I don't think uh, they're going to be able to survive a Black Soul Horde with a hammer of measured force. Something, something to note. As far as coming into a potential turn seven, we'll see what he does with that Black Soul Horde that just finished combat, but they have not used their throwing dogs yet, and Mark has the bottom of the turn. They could get within range to shoot those knights uh, in a seven. We could be looking at a draw, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think his best move is to face them towards the center and hope for a turn seven, because there's really nothing else that they're going to do um, if, if they don't. Mm-hmm. I kind of would like them to put out the 24 inch marker, but that's kind of. Maybe they'll like. Uh, they that. are facing towards the hill there and towards the earth elementals. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't oh, seem I think, necessary. I think they might have heard you, Ashley. <laughs> are they moving that one? Yeah, I think they are. I was what about to say, I, I told you, I, I'm like. I could, I could do it, but sometimes it freaks the players out when I grab their ruler and stuff. So the earth elementals are completely over. And the Black Souls are not. They got um, a long ways to go. And I can't tell if the slaves are all the way over or not. They're awfully close. I think they might still have a toe on the on their side of the table. Yeah, I think I they mean, do. You say it's a long ways, but really they just need to kill the Earth Elementals, turn to face the top of the board, and at bottom six, they'll be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. There's nothing else yeah. in their way. They're just at the double. Right, so I mean, the like druid, the druid could go in, do one wound, disorder them, make it to where they can't can't run by them. Yeah, then you would have to rely on that overrun. overrun. 
Yep. Not not actually a lot of wounds out of this combat. Only one from the slaves and only five uh, from from the black souls. But they already had ten still on them. Still on snakes, so yeah. Still going to yeah. put them on snakes. Yep, there we and go. That would have been a really bad time for snakes, Remark. Yes. I mean, there's not a lot of great times for snakes, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a few that it's like, oh, well. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Once you start to get to turn five and six, they uh, they start to mean a lot more, I think. Devlin's got to be careful with those water elementals next turn and not just just straight counter those uh, wretches. He well, could we end up uh, too far over on the other side of the board. Well, we were talking, yeah. it might be a flank charge there anyways. It is. It should, so, it should be a flank charge. If yeah. He does, if he does a disengage charge... Yeah, then that's definitely the better option. Right. If he, yeah, if he chooses not to withdraw, because he has the option of withdrawing and then declaring a charge, or he could just declare a charge from the position he's in right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he would stay on that side of the board. Um, and have a good back. chance of killing him in one and shot. Could, and you could yeah. probably back up, and then nothing would really be able to see him. What is he doing over here? Trying to Magic. trying to figure out what to do with his black souls to get them in position to walk across the line next turn, I would guess. Um, Does he leave himself enough? Is he going to be able to fit between his two units there? Like his unit in the wall, well, board edge? Yeah, I think so. I don't Side, know sidestepping? Backing, oh. backing the slaves up a little bit. Backing? Yeah, okay. there you go. Yeah, so two inches back for them. And then is he going yeah. to sidestep? Don't know. Looks like he might be. Yep. Interesting. See, they're just doing the little shuffle, you know. And he's gonna need more than a shuffle to get all the way across the next turn, though. Yeah. They can only shuffle so, two inches. I don't like that play because now the druid doesn't even need to engage to prevent him from being able to get across the board. Right. He just needs to stand an inch away, and they can't finish on him, and there's no way for them to move any closer. Yeah. Correct. And there's and nothing they, looking at the druid that can get him. Yeah. Well, they all their black souls are too far. He, he also could just drop the tokens and have the wretch pick him up, which is already across the side of the board. Uh, that's true. Uh, but you have to drop them within your footprint. Yeah, the, the wretches are pretty snugged up on the board edge. Uh, if he... But I think well, a 90 would be able to get him to just walk over and grab them. Yeah, he, yeah he so you... You drop them on your top corner, mm -hmm. you side shuffle down away, walk them forward the one inch so they're still, you know, uh, on their side of the board and touching the two tokens. Pick them up. You can do it. Mm -hmm. if he's, well, the wretches, if so he's the wretches, you turn them 90 and then yeah. step over and grab the token so that they're facing the druid. Yep. Sure. That, that would be the play if he does the druid, which it looks like he did move, adjust his druid's positioning to end where it is right now. Um, can I ask, were the slave warriors called wretches in, like, Warhammer? No. Is that why, why are we called No, them? they're called escaping slaves. Okay. It's like, I'm I kinda, confused. <laughs> I kind of wish with this think, combat here, he had pushed us in the, the druid to prevent these knights from sliding so far. He actually think, probably could have given it. They're called wretches in the regular Ratkin list now, but they're still called slave warriors in the Ratkin yeah. slave list. Yep. Mm, okay, that makes sense. But it's the same unit, for Mm -hmm. I just don't know the the rats super well. They're not my thing. Sure. Sorry to anyone that loves them. Looks like I think I'd enjoy the, them. I've just never played them. The I think they into the side of the injured slave down here. Yeah, yeah. I think the idea in the Rackin list is that they are not um, enslaved. They're just more the kind of huddled masses of the like rat society. The rat yeah. population. The peasants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The peasants. What a bunch of peasants. <laughs> They're not like the noble rats, you know. Yeah, the shock troops. Yeah. Oh, so Alex, who knows something, um, says in Ratkin slaves there are rat slave warriors and slave wretches. Yeah, yeah, that is true. We are using the 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 D four regiments here as opposed to the the D two guys. So Mark uh, has accumulated a bit of a lead in terms of kill points. Not that, that matters much because they're playing Northern Kings, so they both get credit for as much as they've killed. Um, 
but I think this might be the first time in the match uh. they've been that far from each other. One's been that far out of the other. Yeah, he's so, just kind of in the front. Yeah, his druid moving there. Yeah, I don't know if I like that um, because I believe it takes. Well, he has his redeemer. I was going to say it takes inspiring away from these knights, which are going to win you the game in the end yeah. here. Yeah, I guess either either Devlin didn't see the flank, or is just going in the front, hoping that he doesn't kill them and they don't explode on him. Eh, I don't know. He wants to kill him though. He does. Yeah. And even if he didn't do that, he could have backed up, turned, or s stepped sideways or something. Like, he probably could have gotten in, in, in a position to do a surge flank charge. He would have to drop the tokens if he did the surge. Oh, you're right. Yes, Tricky thing is, though, that wouldn't really matter, because you just drop the tokens up, up, up on their front facing, turn, yes. surge the flank, pick them up at the end of the combat. That yeah. is true. <laughs> Next level plays. <laughs> All right, so here's the combat. So uh, water elementals in the center against the wretches. Oh, he didn't cast with a druid. He had to march the druid. Or oh. a double move. Six wounds. Okay, Six I'm wounds. adding the did you not see the flank there to my list of questions. Yeah, you should. Interesting choice. And as some in the chat have said, interesting means dum-dum. So. Uh, but that's an 11 for the <laughs> check. Doesn't matter when you kill him. <laughs> yeah, he did. Did he not roll his regenerations either? I don't believe he did. For the water elementals? No. Mm -hmm. Everyone's forgetting regen. It's fine. Here comes the explosion. Four through. It's been pretty consistently four, which I guess is the average. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's pretty strong. Three wounds, yeah. That's what, six. But I don't think anything can touch him for the rest of the game here. Devlin has been, been rolling pretty well against himself. <laughs> <laughs> and then leaving the D3s on to continue to roll poorly when it matters. Devlin is really marks an MVP is what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Champion of giving you a good game. That two is sidestep one inch? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure. Why not? All right, see if this hindered redeemer can take out these uh, slaves with seven wounds on them already. We hit on fours, wounded on twos. Yeah, it's not a guarantee. Not a guarantee, and, and they're inspired with the overmaster. Uh, five hits on seven dice, though, is not bad for fours. It's a very good start. There's five wounds. And yeah, five wounds. Now it's looking more of a guarantee. Yeah. Up to 12. Puts him on 12, so that's snakes twice. Yep. So when it comes down, uh, down to this time of the game, and I haven't rolled a single snake, guys, I get worried. Because I'm like, <laughs> oh, God, I'm due. It's it's going to happen, and it's going to really matter being turn six, turn seven. Looks like he finally got five for the explosion for once. Uh, that's only going to be two moves, I think. Yeah. Yep. So that's fine. The Redeemer's fine. So now we'll see if these knights can get that token back. In the center of the board. Yeah, I think he's going to overrun to get off this fence. Yeah, that makes sense. In case he needs to punch something to make it drop a token you know, on turn seven. It also guarantees that inspiring range, no matter what he really does with a re potential reform here. Yeah. The other nice kind of side benefit to this, depending on how things play out, is if Mark still does try to turn to get those uh, throwing dogs closer, uh, the Redeemer can go shut that down if necessary. It's true. Right, ten it's hits where... from the Knights and seven wounds? No, ten wounds, right? Yeah, ten wounds, yep. And ten for the Nerve, and seven again will get that. Yeah. That'll do her. And I think that just all but seals the deal for Devlin here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're saying is Mark tough. winning, but actually Mark, even when Mark was carrying those tokens, it was a draw at that point. Who only rolled two for the uh, explosion. Ooh. Good time for it. And no and damage. Ooh. So there's all the snake eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a good time for all snake eyes. This is the greatest time for all snake eyes. Perfect. Yeah, 
<laughs> All right. So basically, if there's a seven, well, I guess it depends. The Overmaster is still threatening. The uh, the knights. What is their nerve? Yeah, yeah but even that. if he if he kills the knights, there's nothing there to pick up the token. Yeah, so it's it would draw at best. best. It would be his draw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like. Hey. Definitely take the charge. Yeah. If there's a yeah. seven, though, does uh, Devlin double charge with the, or triple charge even, with the uh, water elementals? I don't think so, because he Mark might move these black souls over. Yeah, I would keep the water elementals far away. away. Yeah. That's like a secured... Is, is the Redeemer in range of the of the horde right now? Yeah, I, mean, I think you just go yeah. punch the horde with the Redeemer and then send the water elementals in with the knights. Because they would stay on your side of the board. Yeah. True. And then you can uh, back them yeah, up and hopefully get a good overrun on the knights. Probably the yeah. play. Yeah. Plus, secure some extra points. The Overmasters are. Yeah, that's 140 points on that guy. Yeah. I think the. Uh, yeah. I think the worst case scenario, though, is if the Overmaster does somehow kill these Redeemers, I don't think anybody gets that token. That's Yeah, that's what I mean. There's no yeah, way yeah, there's that. nothing. Unless they're, even if there's a turn seven. Well, actually, I guess if he kills uh -oh. the Redeemers, you can't um, pick up the token. So would you just drop the token? Could you drop it like at the corner of your base and have the water elementals walk up and pick it up? Would he have the distance? <laughs> Oh, no, he wouldn't, would he? Because he's only speed five? He's only speed five, five right now. Yeah, so he wouldn't make it. Okay. He's got range to the Overmaster. I don't know if you can see the Overmaster. Oh, that's a interesting move. So he's dropping the token so that he can charge this individual. Oh, oh and pick them up. A, that's a gambling on a nerve roll. I don't know yeah. how much. But I guess it was, like, you probably weren't getting the tokens over either way, right? No, he could have dropped him to the wretches. So there was a way to get that's him over true. With. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You, you explained that maneuver last time. Yeah, that was clever. Yeah. You didn't see it. So, yeah, if he... Oh, he oh, might have totally beat it. I think oh. it's just a hair off. He needs to... He's not centered on the druid anyways, though. He needs to. He would need to come down after this. Yeah, so... To center on it. He'll need to kill the druid still. Yeah, he's he's so kill, higher kill, than he should be kill right the now. druid and the knights though. All right, here's the combat on the knights. That unfortunate black soul horde that literally just did nothing all game. <laughs> only even only three yet. hits. Only three hits from the overmaster. Okay. How much crush does that guy have? One, I crush think. one. So four. 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 Yep. Three wounds? I can't remember. <laughs> that was to hit. Yeah, you called it, Ashley. Three, Three, wounds. Three, wounds. Three wounds. Picks him up on a ten. Twice. Is it twice? Is the druid in six? Redeemer's right not. there. Oh, the redeemer. That's right. I forget, I forget about the redeemer. Nope. No waiver even, so. He is Gucci. Oh. That does pretty much wrap up the game, except for the turn seven roll. But even on turn seven, I guess he's got to do the to kill that druid. druid combat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, Devlin will still be ahead by one point, even well, if he kills the druid and walks forward. Yeah, on the seven, he does have to deal with the overmaster. If he sure. happens to not be wavered, he can take another stab at those knights. I thought that was a nerve roll, and I saw double ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's the elite role, yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess it doesn't role. truly matter. He uh, he wants to kill the druid this turn, but even if he doesn't, he needs a turn seven either way. So there it is. Ten. We'll definitely take, definitely going to kill a druid. And just a one inch overrun will give him off the. Or just a pivot. Yeah. Pivot, yeah. Either way. Whatever you want to roll. Sure. Better I, don't, I don't know if I've ever seen uh, units end up like this, how it is on the right side of the board. Yeah, it's a great, you, 
you have a horde facing the board edge. <laughs> you have a rat unit facing the wrong way. <laughs> no and no turn seven. And that's Devlin's. So a one one point win. Yep. One point win for Devlin. Still a win. Um, Wins a win. Mark killed a few more points. Devlin did, but this is a scenario game, so that does not really matter. Mm-hmm. All right, so we will wait for them to come back and join us here. Uh, and we'll do a wrap up. We had some questions. There was a question. You want to know about this, the flank charge with the water elementals there at the end that we didn't take? And taking a sacred horn and unique aura was something we talked about at the beginning of the game. Right. So they're probably totaling up their their kill points right now. But we don't need this table for any particular reason anymore, I don't think. Nope. All right. So interesting. Interesting match. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know that I would have predicted a one-point win for either of them. I kind of figured Devlin was going to smash him up uh, or or get bogged down one or the other. But we kind of saw a one flank did did one kind of grind and the other the other flank kind of did another kind of grind. Um, Yeah. I think we said at the beginning that uh, we liked the positions for both token uh, placements. And basically, both of them had their game plans. But I think Devlin's game plan included focusing on the center more. Yep. Hello, Devlin. Congratulations. I was completely unbiased and didn't cheer for you the whole game. I don't believe you, but I appreciate that anyway. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so for starters, uh, congratulations. We're waiting for Mark to come back, but I guess we have a, we had a couple of questions. Here he comes. Uh, do you want to start asking Devlin about that uh, flank charge? Um, yeah, so at the end there, you had the water elementals um, that had been cha- charged by the slaves. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see that that would have been a flank and you wouldn't have had to move your druid? I didn't see that it was a flank, um, but retrospect i think that puts me in a better position um making stuff pull fully out of my butt because if i don't pop the two units on the right the waters at least can look that way and try to grab something yeah that's a fair point. um but essentially i wanted to kind of stay and didn't want any shenanigans but no i didn't see it. there there was a flank there so not that it ended up needing it because you killed them anyways in the front correct so. yeah <laughs> it's like they're still dead <laughs> Sometimes you just roll 11s. Yeah. Sometimes you just roll 11. All right, interesting stuff. We, we we did have some questions we wanted to ask you guys about uh, things that we noted during the match. Uh, so first, uh, Mark, kind of at the very yep. beginning, uh, your use of the, uh, the overmaster on the flying uh, half-breed, um, you chose to turn it in and kind of land it between a building and a forest instead of trying to throw it up the flank. Uh, we, we were kind of wondering, I couldn't, like... I couldn't, I couldn't get it up the flank out of the... Um, off. Nice of the knights so if i threw it up the flank um it would have either been in the taking it in the front or the flank um and so it would have died up that side of the field anyway um there was no way of me moving it out of flank uh, out of being charged uh so the best one was to try and at least put a threat onto what was attacking the war engines what i missed was his individual could also hit the war engine uh so i wasn't expecting that one so i thought it was one going into the war engine and i could mop that up and hopefully mm-hmm. move and then take the charge and be killed um it did delay and kept kept the um war engines alive for a lot uh, for a bit longer than they would have been uh and tied up a lot of his stuff down in that corner which was the other part is tie things up for a few more turns, then the, so they cause devastation on eight five point units. Um, get worried about spend a couple of turns on a three hundred point unit, it starts 
work it starts costing itself back in because of the time it, it spent down in that corner oh, so it, uh, it drew stuff over where i wanted it away from other things and i made sure to turn those knights back in so that if you were going to run up with that um dragon that i would have a good shot of charging it if you wanted to kind of run forward I eyeballed yeah. it, so I wasn't doing it to a science, but I was kind of doing enough to deter, and it ended up working, so... Yay. All right, what else do we got? What's that, sorry? I was, do, did we have any other questions? Um, one question I had for Mark. Uh, with the Overmaster on foot, taking the aura item, um, yep. it looks as if He's not able to take a magical artifact, uh, but it looks like you have the sac sacred horn on there. Um, I just was wondering if that was an oversight or if you had some. That was an oversight because I, I didn't, didn't realize he couldn't take it. Yeah, because uh, it reads it. that the, the aura, gain stride or aura, this unique upgrade cannot be taken in addition to a magical artifact, is how it reads on the. I totally missed that. Sorry about that. I really missed That's that fair. one. It's kind slaves of inconsistent. Would, slaves would have hit on sixes. I would, I would have loved that. But no, it, <laughs> um, I mean, it was just more like we were like, did we miss something else that, like, the secret horn? No, I, ch I changed the list because my previous one was made illegal with the crystal being taken off of it. So I had okay. 50 points play it, to play about with. And I, I totally missed that that item, sorry, that un unique upgrade cannot take a artifact because some uniques can. So right. I, I yeah. missed yeah. that yeah. totally. Yeah, we did say that it was uh, a little inconsistent with some of the different auras, so. Yeah, there's only like two or three that you can't take an artifact with, so. Mm -hmm. but... Any any other questions from folks watching the stream from the match? I was kind of I was kind of curious, um, Devlin. You you kind of got a little bit aggressive on the right hand side of the board. Um, mm -hmm. And I and I really thought that you were going to just kind of hold hold that line and delay a little more. Um, what were you What were you thinking over there on that side of the board? Uh, what turn two ish? Yeah, turn yeah. Three. Or, um, or, or turn turn three, four. Yeah. I think I needed a push up with the Earth Elementals to kind of try to block him at that center line as close as I could because I knew he's dwarves, so he can mm -hmm. only march so fast. It ended up taking a long time for them to get shooting. That chewed through. Um, I could have backed up uh, one of the. I think one of the beasts got shot. No, one of the beasts got shot at. So I could have kind of backed up to avoid that. But essentially, I wanted to make sure if the charges were happening, they were going to happen on the um, on the uh, the earth elementals. It played out about how I expected it. You know, retrospect, hindsight, all that kind of stuff. But essentially it was, I knew I was never going to win over there, but it was, if I kind of engage now, maybe it's a little bit too early for him to start trying to move some of the back black souls more towards mm -hmm. the center of the board. So a little bit of more pressure earlier, I think was going to prevent him from dipping towards the, the crucial token. Mm -hmm. And kind of, but I only have like 25% of a plan most of the time so I, <laughs> it, it worked out and kind of picking back piggybacking on that devlin uh did the thought ever cross your mind to jam those earth elementals up there similar to how you did allow that double charge from the slaves and then just sit there not counter charge i i did um but i think what happened was some of the slaves ran up Basically, I was sitting at a point to where, yes, I could have sat them because obviously I double charged because if I just single charged the Earth Elementals, I was giving up a flank to the slaves the next turn. And he was consistently doing two turns a turn from everything. Could I have probably just sat there? Yes. Um, but I feel like had I not thrown the units up that I did, because um, I eventually, I kind of had the plan to where I'm going to see if I can get cheeky and throw both of the... Um, the beasts up into the token unit because it was holding up the unit behind it. Um, what I didn't see was some of the charges he had, I guess that kind of landed him with the extra slaves in the back line. I, I really kind of hope that I think the one unit I wavered or maybe it wasn't a waiver over there. It was, it was with the minute arms that I could have maybe removed earlier and that would have made things smoother, but best played plans and all that. 
Um, but honestly, I was I was kind of the mindset that I know I'm going to lose this fight, but let me kind of jam things up here. And I think with how clust I thought with how clustered I was that it was going to be hard for him to get multiples in. But he was kind of really good at getting those slaves in the flanks every which way forward. So yeah. should I have sat back a little bit more? Probably, but. I don't think much during these games, and it's early, and I'm hungover, so we do what I can. No, but but also, I mean, to be honest, you held me back over the 24-inch line until turn six. Yeah, that was kind of the loose goal that was in the back of my mind, was hold him off as far as you can. Hold, hold. Um, But I did most of it, so I was kind of pleased with that. And then a question for Mark. Um, kind of seeing how the the game played out uh, as commentators kind of mentioned after you guys left uh, a lot of times this comes down to the center token uh, what was your yep. game plan going in and kind of in the first few turns of how you were going to control that center token uh, the original plan was, was some of those black souls were going to start moving across to actually then throw their dogs and so everything else had exploded up and then they throw the dogs and release the token, as it were. Um, that didn't quite go to plan because on the right, it was a lot harder to punch through that than I first anticipated, especially with the defense six golems, or, uh, stone elementals. Um, and that took a hell of a lot longer than what I first anticipated. So that put that plan a bit more oop. Uh, and Stall mm-hmm. things from moving, being, at, being able to be released just in case I lost the token. Uh, so I uh, to be able to actually then go and mop up. Um, I love the fact that the token, especially the middle one, changed hands a few times. Uh, and I love also the fact that the double tokens changed. We both switched units, which haven't. Yeah, cool. it, it looked for a moment like that middle token may just be left on the floor if the Overmaster had gotten through those knights. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I had a bit of luck on the um, Overmaster, uh, but I totally forgot about the individual and how many shots, how many hits he had, mm-hmm. and that he then becomes even more of a nasty thing against mm-hmm. the uh, big beast. So where I didn't think he could get in to charge the, um, I wasn't even thinking about it, that he could get in to charge the war engine, he was suddenly a, a, in a lot closer than what I anticipated because I missed it. <laughs> totally mm. missed that. Okay. Well, it was definitely a fun game to watch, guys. Yeah, yeah. that was a good one. Yeah, thanks so much for letting us uh, watch over your shoulders while you play. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, watching and hope you've enjoyed everything we've streamed so far this weekend. Coming up uh, next week, so far we've got a couple of matches lined up. We have one on uh, Thursday and one on Saturday. We're going to be announcing those uh, later in the week. Uh, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. You can find out when things get scheduled before we post them on Facebook. Um, and other than that, uh, I've been your host, Mike Atkins. I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this streamed uh, game on Dash 28 Live. I'd like to thank, again, Mark and Devlin uh, for letting us watch their match. And congrats to Devlin on winning. And uh, good luck to both of you in the remaining two rounds of the tournament. And I'd cool. also like to thank uh, Ashley and Michael and Adam Ballard for uh, coming and hanging out with me and talking about the game. Uh, and uh, all of you, you stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time on Dash 28 Live. Cool.